Welcome everyone um, to the January 9th, 2019 uh, Select Board meeting. Uh, the meeting is now in session. Tonight we will start with a proclamation for a business leader in our community, uh, Julie Thurlow, President and CEO of uh, Reading Cooperative Bank. After that, uh, we'll hear select liaison reports, listen to public input, um, and hear the town manager's report. After that, we will work on a number of action items, uh, including, um, sorry, just lost my place, the management of the Mallet Land parcel that's behind Willow Street. Um, then we'll approve class two licenses. Uh, hear an update from the Reading Cultural Council, who I believe is in the house. Um, discuss the Tarrant Lane 40B um, project in Wakefield. Discuss the next two years of payment from RMLD to the town. Finalize the motion from last meeting that Barry put forth about forming the subcommittee to improve the evaluation project uh, process for the town manager. And lastly, uh, hear from the subcommittee uh, policy, uh, the policy subcommittee um, that's set up to revise section two and parts of section one in our policies. And if Dan and I are on that uh, subcommittee and, and, and Dan will be reporting for that. So let's start with, um, I'll pass, hand it over to Barry Great. and uh, he can start us off with the recognition of Tula. Ms. Thurlow, would you like to come forward please? Actually, we're going to have you sit in the in the town manager's chair right now. Wow, thank you, Bob. You're welcome. <laughs> Looks good on you. <laughs> well, look at the turnout you got. Yeah. I know. <laughs> so, so Julie, you probably like you, like you're scratching your head and you go, "Why am I here?" <laughs> well, and then I found out earlier today that a lot of these other people were going to be here as well. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> the cat's out of the bag. Right. So, so here's why you're here. So, um, as a fellow banker. Right. Um, I'm the only banker on the board. You know, we get kind of um, portrayed kind of, you know, nastily in media, sort of, you know, not caring and everything. And so I'm kind of sensitive to that. And you and I probably get a lot of uh, subscribe to the same uh, periodicals, uh, industry periodicals. And it just seems over the last year or so, every time I open one up, I'm, I'm seeing your name. Business, Boston Business Journal, American Banker, Banker and Tradesman, The Globe. I'm looking... It's like there's Julie. Right? I'm seeing Julie. I'm seeing Julie's name, and it's like, wow, we really have somebody here that's really important. And then um, I I read another article, and, you know, with a little dismay, as I'm sure you did, about yet another local community bank that had been in its community for a really long time that sold out to a national or a regional bank. And then I remembered a few years ago about the work that you did to make sure that the Ready Cooperative Bank would always at least. In, perp in per perpetuity stay a depositor owned bank and why that's so important because while we have lots of really great banks in town who do a lot of great work having a mutual bank where people put their money in and the money stays in that community is so important and the work that you did to ensure that um, is really um, uh, it, it, it goes it, it, it just can't be it can't be beat given that all what's going around us as, as banks become national and sort of maybe lose their focus and then the final straw is I read something and I, I think I think Shannon may have put it out. You've been here for 25 years. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while. It's been a while. So, you know, that was the straw. So I had talked to Bob and Andy. I said, you know what, we got we have to get Julian here to say a really big thank you for the work that you've done. And so um, we've prepared a little proclamation thank you. in your honor. And so I'm I'm gonna I'm actually gonna make a motion. Uh, for this proclamation, um, and um, it goes as for this is a certificate of recognition, and it's hereby award Julianne, Ju Julianne M. Thurlow. Reading Select Board congratulates Julianne, Julianne M. Thurlow on her 25 years of service to the citizens of Reading as a banker with Reading Cooperative Bank. Julie joined Reading Co-op in 1993 as a loan officer and quickly rose through the lending ranks, becoming president and CEO in 2006. Under Julie's stewardship, the bank assets grew from 200 million to 550 million and branches doubled from four to eight across Greater Reading. As president of Reading Cooperative's charitable foundation, the bank has become one of the community's philanthropic stalwarts. Whether hosting Santa Claus at the annual tree lighting to taking the lead role in rebuilding families after the devastating schoolhouse fire. The bank has donated nearly a half a million dollars to area nonprofits in the last five years. 
with over a quarter of Massachusetts chartered banks consolidating since 2000. Julie has taken significant measures to ensure Reading Co-op would remain a depositor-owned mutual bank in perpetuity. Under her leadership, the charter of the bank was changed to require a supermajority vote of both board members and depositors to approve a sale and to forbid any bank officer from owning stock in the new corporation for five years. Basically, it's going to be the depositors over, over investors. Um, Julie's leadership, mentoring, and role modeling have earned her accolades outside of Reading. She has earned a spot in Commonwealth Institute's top 100 women-led businesses in Massachusetts for the past four years. She was twice named by American Bank Magazine as the, one of the top 25 women to watch, the only Massachusetts banker to be so honored. This year, Julie was named number 43 on the Boston Globe's top list of 100 women-led companies and a Distinguished Leader Award at the New England Women in Banking Conference. Um, and the Boston Business Journal this uh, past fall designated Julie as a woman of fire. Not on fire. <laughs> Finance, insurance, and real estate, specifically citing Julie's commitment to mentoring women in the banking field. She's also one of 30 business leaders participating in the Harvard Business School Lawrence Leeds program around the goal of transforming the city of Lawrence. So on behalf of the Reading Board of Selectmen, um, you may have been sort of a failed music, music student, right? <laughs> but to Reading, you are a rock star. So I want to present this to you. Thank so, you so much. Um, I make a motion. It and um, all in favor? All right. I like to give a It's marketing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm in the chair. Okay. Um, so I actually brought with me um, a century of service. This was actually a book that was published by um, Ms. Dubois. Um, history about um, writing cooperative bank. When you actually leaf through this, and I have a PDF that I could email to any of you. Um, there is not a building in Reading that is named after an outstanding um, Reading resident from the beginning of Reading um, that didn't serve on our board. Um, and um, when you actually leaf through and see the changes that have happened in this town and, and the leadership that's actually happened by this town, that's the reason why um, being a steward of the bank would change our bylaws. Um, a community bank is actually important to the vitality of the economic well-being of the community. So um, I share this with you and leave this with you, and, um, and I'm happy to share um, more broadly um, for anybody that's interested in how our history actually aligns right with the city, the towns. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, now we'll turn to liaison, we'll start the liaison reports, and um, I'll, I'll give the, the room a, a minute to clear out. You guys can stay. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're here for her. <laughs> and those of you, there's some empty seats up here, so you might want to move up. Um, Right, front row seating available. Right, so liaison reports. Um, Dan, would you like to go first? Sure. Uh, actually, I'm not going to give a report now because what I would be talking about, we're covering under two agenda items, so yep. I'll let that go. Okay, yeah. fair enough. Very. Oh, my sorry. Okay. That's okay. Yeah. So, um, a couple of things. Um, uh, as you recall, uh, at, at, I think it was a October, November meeting, the board um, created an ad hoc committee to look at um, to look at some of uh, you know, creating potentially a new uh, some new governance around how we deal with um, with hate with, with human human, uh, human rights to potentially potentially maybe replace a track. So Vanessa and I have met a couple of times on that as the subcommittee that you that you put together uh, for that. Um, we're we're at the point now where we are um, going to be sending out shortly invitations for people to actually join that ad hoc um, and start work. Um, so um, 
I'm not sure when that would be, but we're trying to formulate the actual putting the committee together, um, and um, and then obviously we'll report as as we go forward. Um, uh, the other thing I wanted just to let folks know um, is that this Monday um, at the Senior Center, at Pleasant Street Center, um, uh, Monday the 14th at 12.15, um, Middlesex District Attorney Marion Ryan is actually going to be coming to Reading um, and to talk and, and lead a discussion on um, on uh, basically scam awareness. A lot of seniors are taking advantage, obviously, on the phone or door to door with um, you know, home heating, snow removal, tree service, uh, furnace cleaning, where they basically get scammed into signing contracts that obviously aren't aren't that great. So um, we're really lucky to have Mary and Ryan come in and actually lead that discussion at the Senior Center. I keep, I'm sorry, Pleasant Street Center. Um, and I think that's also sponsored by the Council of Aging, too, if I'm not mistaken. And that's Monday the 14th at 12.15. So um, folks that are listening to that, I think it would be a great, uh, if you know folks that you think could take advantage of that, that would be great for them, too. To, uh, to stop in and, and meet with uh, DA Ryan. Thanks. That's all. Thanks. Vanessa? Yep. Uh, so I was at the Birch Meadow Master Plan subcommittee meeting earlier tonight. Uh, they have the survey results back uh, from the community wide survey. They will be planning on presenting that in either March or April. Uh, once they've had time to process all the data. Um, the cemetery board also met earlier tonight. They'll be updating signage around the cemeteries uh, in the spring, and they'll be doing some hazardous tree removal this winter. Uh, they are interested in replanting new trees uh, to replace those that are, that are lost, uh, funds allowing. And the Reading Garden Club has taken on a project of refreshing the area around the War Memorial at Laurel Hill. Um, I've also been working on the social media policy that we've talked about, so maybe not at the next meeting, but the one that follows, um, we'll be able to discuss that in more detail. Great. Great. John. So, um, not exactly committee re, you know, reports, however, um, I'm very happy to announce that in my role as liaison to um, one of the projects in town, Oak Square, mm -hmm. um, I can tell you that um, last night they crossed their last kind of perfunctory hurdle mm -hmm. that had to do with um, demolition. demolition delay. Um, there will be no demolition delay. They're really only working on the warehouse portion of the... Uh -huh. And um, I think we can all expect Postmark Square to get into full swing tomorrow morning. Oh, wow. Uh, so, do they have building permits? And I think they're... Yeah, yeah they're well, right. After last night, they should. Yeah, yeah after they, last yeah, night, that was the only hope. The, so uh, so I think oh. they're uh, locked and loaded, ready to go, and it's very exciting that uh, that, that project is getting underway. So I'm very happy that we're, we marched through that. Um, the other one is kind of an unofficial capacity that I um, that I visited the the Boston area Boy Scout Council recognized on Friday night all the Eagle Scouts from 2018. Um, there were 500 people in attendance. Um, Reading had the largest contingent of Eagle Scouts in 2018 in the council that serves 71 communities, including Weston, um, which is very impressive. This is still a place it's okay to be a Boy Scout, um, and it's a place that you can actually thrive and you know be accepted in that way. And um, we now for 10 years have had the largest contingent of Eagle Scouts in all of all of those communities, and that's something for us all in town to be very proud of in my opinion. The guest speaker um, was someone who won't be a stranger to any of you, Francisco Urena, who is the um, Secretary for Veterans Affairs, also a Brother Eagle Scout, um, accepted our invitation to be the speaker, did a great job with the kids, and um, reminisced that his first official duty was in Reading. Uh, the day he, literally the day he started, if you guys remember, we were down at the, near the train station putting a young Marine and his wife into a into a veterans yeah. group housing uh, project. And with the train. So it was really quite a great night, right. you know, all with things the considered. And yeah, Reading the was uh, duly noted uh, in a large group. So I pass that along to you. Great to hear some positive news. My experience with the Boy Scouts was camping in the middle of the winter in the town forest. It's good for you. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, Builds character. Yes, yes. I still have ways to go. 
Um, so just I have just two items to talk about today. Um, one was that the board on Christmas Day received uh, a complaint uh, via email. The complaint came in the morning. I didn't see it. We were having Christmas lunch, Christmas Day lunch. I didn't see it until early afternoon. But the complaint was regarding to construction-related noises at 306, the 306 Main Street development. And I bring this up because, I, you know, on my way home, I, I swung by and, and uh, reminded them that it was a national holiday and Christmas Day, and um, they, you know, without me asking, just said, "Go cash in for the day." But I did follow up with our um, bylaws, and I and I wanted to make sure everyone's aware. There's going to be a number of developments going up in town. There are, and there's going to be more. That the construction hours allotted in town are from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Monday through Friday. 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. on Saturdays, and um, with a few exceptions, construction is not allowed on Sundays and on legal holidays. So if you uh, I wanted to make sure residents are aware of these um, limits on construction and construction noises, etc., um, and that they, you know, if you have a complaint to make, that you can call the uh, Reading Police Department or the dispatcher, and they'll they'll look into it. Um, the second thing I wanted to bring up a couple things about the Board of Health. Um, they at their last meeting they discussed, or as we've discussed, the the Board of Health is going to uh, give us a new draft of the pesticide regulations. Um, you know they're tackling the. Um, testing, soil testing issue now, um, and they hope to wrap that up the, during this month, and they should be come to the visit the board and present their draft to us for our feedback and which, which direction we want to go. Um, also on the Board of Health, I, um, I reviewed a violation log. Uh, violations issued by uh, uh, health agents and uh, health directors that span it back a number of years. And I, I did notice something that is potentially concerning, that there have been no violations issued in the past two, two years um, compared to the previous two years, which had 100, 112 violations. So um, I think we, you know, the board needs to be uh, uh, cognizant of that and uh, and see how that uh, plays out. All right, with that, I'll open it up for public comment. And please state your name, your address, and direct your comments to me. And before I begin, I'd like to have, uh, just a show of hands of how many people think they'll comment during the public comment period. There'll be another one for Tarrant Lane uh, later on. So just a couple people. All right, great. Uh, so Bill had his hand up first. Bill Brown from Matt Monroe. A few more ago, the people who bought the property from Tarrant that's where the uh, Frankie's daughters. Uh, what progress has been done on that situation? And I, I'm going to suggest a appropriate, I think, uh, tribute to Frankie would be naming the softball field for its metal field. So if you don't feel that you know changing streets too difficult, they're, they'd like to hear. Uh, the other thing, uh, what is the status on Oakland Road? I mean, I, I, I know you guys have not in hurry. It's only been since 1937. I, mean, I don't think that we should be hurrying yet. But, uh, you know, they're looking at potential over $2 million for that. Yes. Um, I'll let Bob field the um, Frank Driscoll question. Okay, thank you. Um, actually, uh, one of the uh, neighbors sent an email to the board today. Um, an employee of the town hall is very good friends with one of Frank's daughters, and so we've been using that. Um, one of the challenges is there's a couple of different suggestions from people who aren't necessarily talking to each other about how they want to honor him. Yeah. So we're trying to get our arms around it and organize that. Um, right now, it's and, and we knew action wasn't going to be till the spring anyways after the winter. 
right now there's an agenda item set for the second meeting in February for PTTF recommendations to the board, and that is likely when a list of suggestions or a list of possibilities could come up. I liked your suggestion that you made to one of the family or neighbors about a marine <coughs> insignia. Oh yeah, we got to put that on. Yeah. 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 Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and and Bill, in answer to your second question. Uh, the disposition of the Oakland Road property is one of this, this board's and goals for this year. And I know that there are um, s some members of the board. I don't know whether it's a subcommittee. Yeah, I'll, I'll take this one. Thank Go you. ahead. All right. Um, John and I actually spoke recently. We're on the subcommittee for capital projects, and we'll be meeting in the next couple of weeks. And that's one of the items on our agenda. <coughs> Excuse me. John and I are on the subcommittee for the capital projects, right. and we're going to be meeting in the next couple of weeks. That's one of the items on our agenda. Well, I, I, it's not posted yet, but we will put that I, up. I think one thing you want to do is go into Google Earth, and you can see the exact connection with uh, the church in the Nazarene on the main street, so it's on big property. It's just right there. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Thank you. You're Thanks for nagging us, Bill. We're, we're getting on it. Um, I'll, I'll keep nagging until the soul does that. Okay, all right. Uh, anyone else? Yes, please. Hi, I'm Christy Coppice, and this is Elizabeth Gomez. We were, well, she was here before the board in September, and I was unable to come, but I had emailed the board. And we had uh, discussed the speeding concern, the traffic issues on Haverhill Street, coming off of the rotary, proceeding on Timberneck to Charles. Mm -hmm. And I know that there's another traffic meeting, um, safety meeting, on January 23rd. But my main concern, because I live on Timberneck, is Timberneck Drive, and I've actually been informed by the <coughs> scout and the traffic officer that there are no changes. I was I was given representations in September, and none of those changes are now going into effect. Simple things, speed limit sign, officer enforcement. I was specifically told, which I find unacceptable, that because in the past three years there have been no pedestrian accidents, there will be no changes. In writing, on an email. So until my child, my dog, I get hit by a car, something's going to be done. Now I understand that there are changes being made to Haverhill Street. I know the state has to approve the speed limit changes. But at this point, I'm not even asking for a speed limit change on my street. I want a speed limit sign, and I want traffic enforcement. There have been, in the pa in the very recent past, more officers on Haverhill Street and Charles Street, which is great. And I guess in, the, in November alone, there were 52 traffic enforcement citations given on Haverhill Street. Again, that's great. It's great revenue for the town. So imagine what more we could get. Where I live on Timberneck Drive, you can hear the cars coming off of Haverhill Street. They're not going slow. I mean, you can hear them from my front window. And just on November 16th, there was a really bad accident on the at the end of Timberneck, which is two houses over from me. Uh, the car, there were two vehicles coming up Haverhill Street. One turned onto Timberneck, and it's kind of a blind road because of the curb as you go north on Haverhill Street. The car went to turn on Timberneck, and the car behind it wouldn't slow down, rear-ended, and hit the telephone pole. Haverhill Street was out of commission for a couple of hours on that Friday night because she was actually coming over for dinner, and she couldn't even drive to my house, which is three houses down. So, you know, there are some concerns that are still outstanding, and I don't appreciate the traffic officer telling me that, well, there have been no pedestrian accidents in three years on your street, so we're not going to be proactive about this. That's unacceptable. So we're looking for the board's involvement. I know the town manager, I believe he was um, involved in the last traffic meeting, so I'm asking for just more representation of the neighborhoods. And it's not my street alone. We are a cut through street, so is Wakefield Street. Yeah. You know, they're out of state plates. You can tell they don't live around here. Yeah. Um, you know, it's a, it's a public city issue, and mm -hmm. I think the board needs to, um, you know, perhaps speak up for us at the traffic safety meeting because residents can't go to that meeting. Sure. Um, thanks for your comment. Uh, I think that I, 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 I can't answer this one. This would be either for one of our public safety liaisons, John Halsey or, or Vanessa. Uh, they could probably be best for them to follow up. Bob, did you, if you guys don't, one of you don't mind. Bob. Bob. Um, uh, also, that same second meeting in February, I forget the date, it's 20-something. Uh, that is when the safety committee, if you will, is full recommendations are coming to the board. Um, I don't honestly remember a discussion of Timberneck. I've not 
attended every minute of every meeting. I am much more familiar with the discussion on Haverhill and the fact there will be changes suggested to this board. Regardless of what I or the police department say, this is the board that actually makes the changes. Um, so just keep that in mind that whatever recommendations may come to them are not the final word. Uh, but the rec recommendations made are based on consistent philosophy of what has happened, what are our concerns, and et cetera. It's not a simple yes or no. Right. Um, we'll discuss it again at the next meeting, though. I'll go to it. And I know that there was going to be a, a, a speed analysis, which on Haverhill Street, that, that I call the speed tracker, that trailer that yeah. sits on the street. I was told by Officer Scouten that that would be in different places on Timberneck just to assess so that the study would be complete for both Timberneck and Haverhill, and it wasn't. He said, it'll probably be in front of your house. It was placed on the far end where there's no issue, and it never made its way up anywhere else, and now he's telling me that the study is pretty much, you know, over for Timberneck. So to the extent that we could do something, and like I said, it's not just my street. There are a few cut-through streets over there, and that the killing school is there, and it does happen a lot during, you know, the afternoon after school in the evening hours, and there's a lot of there are a lot of children and animals over there, pets. Yeah. So, and um, Elizabeth was here in September, and her dog was hit by a car and died. You know, immediately right. in September. So that's what prompted us to try yeah. and speak up and bring this issue to the board <coughs> and to the traffic officer. Okay, thank you, uh, Bob. Would you give give a, you'll give me a heads up when yeah. um, they, they decide to come? Could I ask you a favor? Could you um, just short bullet points? You can send, because the things on Timberneck you're talking about, this is the first time I've heard of them. Okay. I mean, the, the Haverhill discussion, I was present in this room when that came up. And, you know, Vanessa and I are you know, liaisons to public safety. If you could just shoot an email to the sure. to the board. Doesn't have to be anything special or long, the bullet points. That'll, you know, empower us to actually make a quick call. And, you know, it, it sounds like it's more of a... It, maybe a communication issue about let's get you know the little traffic trailer where it belongs and make sure that it's just following getting through on yeah I think that's all so if you can do that I think you know we may be able to get a more positive result for you okay great Thank okay you. I wanted to echo everything that Kristen said as well I'm also going to on Street um, was, she said it really really well but I just wanted to follow up as well with the traffic officer that was at the last board meeting that I was at um, didn't say that I could get a sign from my driveway that said it was in my driveway I live right off of the edge of the curve where he built her big curves and people really you know, flying really fast right off of yep. the rotary and it's really hard for me to pull out of my driveway and that's where my dog died um, and I just wanted to get a follow-up because the traffic, traffic officer did say that they could get a sign for me that said hit the driveway and I didn't end up getting that ever. Um, there, they just said that there wasn't a sign that doesn't exist anymore. So I did get a follow-up as to what other plan could be offered to me that would alert people to the fact that I'm coming out of my driveway. Um, I'd like to really address because it's dangerous for me, it's dangerous for my guests, and my dog did have to suffer. You know, yep. that well, you've had an incident already that's a heartbreaking incident, so, uh, I, you know, let, let's just, simple, you know, to the whole board, Vanessa and I can grab that, you know, make a call or maybe make a stop into a meeting, and as Bob points out, you know, um, we do have some, we don't have much juice, but we have a little when it comes to traffic, you know, traffic and potholes, we're pretty good at that stuff, so. Great, okay, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, thanks, John. Um, anyone else in the back? Uh, I think the woman first, and then you. I'm Thomas Thompson, Arlington Street. Um, I'm going to be continuing to have significant um, impact on the Olympic Restaurant Project in the train to go neighborhood, um, mostly to uh, residents who live directly in the neighborhood, and also to union traffic. Um, so uh, there was a meeting with the developer a few months ago. Uh, no, no action was taken. Well, some, no action was taken. some has been made. I'll let you finish. I apologize. There was a fire. So 2018 brought a lot of interesting events to that site. Um, there was a legal, we started the year with a legal asbestos removal. Uh, incredible uh, uh, unplanned. Uh, collapse of the Doucette building um, and we continue and, and all of those are signs that we need to as a town pay attention to the concerns of the community 
um, continue to have ongoing concerns at that site um, that have not yet been addressed. Um, and um, I'm interested to let you know that and to ask for relief from the town government to be um, monitoring, as, as you mentioned earlier, that there, there's been a, a, a lack of um, enforcement measures taken, not only by the health department, but also um, there, there's no enforcement measure taken all year in 2018 site that had uh, significant uh, violations. So um, as, as residents of the town are concerned about how development is done in this town and what we are signaling uh, to residents and developers, both inside the town now and those who are prospecting or watching these meetings, um, we are sending a very specific message about what matters <coughs> onto our community and um, residents continue to be concerned and are impacted um, Kate, just to respond to the meeting that we had with the developer, um, two action items sort of came out of that. One was the developer was going to go to the um, public works and get a sign that notified people uh, the day before when the tra when the road was going to be closed because that created a, and and I I haven't. Um, I asked the develop. I emailed the developer a, a month ago or so, and uh, about getting that sign, and, and, and he hasn't responded. So um, I think uh, the assistant town met. But the other thing that came out of that meeting was uh, there is a uh, tracking sheet that the assistant town manager is maintaining, and. Uh, if residents have concerns, I've, I've heard concerns, nails along the road, people getting flat, frequently getting flat tires. Um, you know, of course, the siding, the tire deck siding came off and was flapping. Um, and the, the, the gate opened up one day and... Uh, Not one day. That, that's been a regular. Okay. Yeah. So the, the tire issue is to do with how the dumpsters are moving. So there's, there's ongoing issues that the town could really help yes. in managing so that the safety of the community is improved. Um, I, I'm, I'm sorry, somehow I failed to mention that the end of the year ended with a real bang when um, there was uh, a fire on the site. Um, and uh, that seems to have brought in at least one um, uh, inspection to mm -hmm. the site, um, which uh, has uh, demonstrated that there are significant concerns within the site that cannot be seen from the street. Um, so I, I'd like to know that the town is maintaining safety on that site uh, because it impacts us all. Thank you. Thank you, Cadence. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, this is a big topic that we, you know, we can't fully encompass here. I appreciate you bringing it up. Um, Vanessa is um, has been working on this along with Jean um, because of her ties to the issues liaison to ZBA and whatnot. So we're we're doing our best. People should again they should call the assistant town manager if they have a concern. She'll log it, log the date, and um, then sort of try to come to some sort of resolution. Did you want to say something? Yeah, I just had a question for Bob. Bob, um, this site, more than any other, um, gets a lot of attention from residents. Um, what is our practice for monitoring what is happening at that site? I know from the fire chief that increased inspections are happening now due to the recent fire, um, but for some of the other issues, traffic, parking, open gates, early start times, I mean, what have you. So, um, what efforts are we taking so that the public is aware of what's happening? Um, do you want me to show that spreadsheet? I have it if you want. Sure. Yeah. Somewhere. So this is through the year end, just December 31st. There, that's impossible to read. Sure. So you just get a flavor of um, what the complaints were, who called with a complaint, where they live, and then what the complaint was. Um, I have to say the nails in the tire, I don't remember. 
Oh, that, I think that, I think was, that recent. was a recent that was just came okay. out today. Okay, all right. Yeah. I, so I haven't seen that one. Um, but in general, when complaints come in, as you can, well, you can't see here, but let me just show you, almost, almost all of them have been resolved. Um, some of them are just meetings, but everything that has been brought forward to the town has been uh, resolved. Now, interestingly, some of the complaints I see here were work before 7 a.m. I promise you, no one is doing work they're not paid for. They are arriving on scene before 7 a.m. as they are allowed to. They are loudly unpacking their trucks, which technically is not a violation. We talk to them and try to say, you're in a neighborhood, please be a little more quiet. But adamantly, they have denied that they are doing any work uh, before 7 because they're not paid for it. So I'm not there. I don't know. I can just tell you what I heard. They arrived at 6 and start work. have been starting work at 6.30. So I, I, okay. I have thought independently about it that um, they must be getting paid. Surely they would yeah. not be showing up and doing that if they were not being paid. So, and th there has been a significant history of misrepresentations made to the town by this developer. Yeah, and to one of Andy's earlier comments, um, you know, with all due respect, um, letting the town manager, the assistant town manager, or the board know of things is great. We're not going to run down at 6 in the morning because we didn't see the email in time. You've got to call the police. They work 24-7. If there's a complaint that someone's working at 6 or 6.30 in the morning, they'll go down right then. And then they will verify what is going on. I have made that call on only one occasion because okay. of the dynamics that are concerning about my own safety on the occasion that I was courageous enough to make such a call, and I know other people in the community are concerned, um, but when I w was able to make that call, um, the, the responding officer um, reported that no work was being done on the site, that the call was a false alarm, and that the workers were only there because they, they had to turn off the heating system. Now, this call was made a few days after the fire, which okay. involved a heating system. So they claimed that they were on the site at 6 a.m. because of the heating system. Do you remember what date? If, so there's no, why is there not a fire guard there overnight? If, if they need somebody to monitor the heating system at 6 a.m., I don't know why they don't need to monitor at 3 a.m. or 4 a.m., but um, the excuse that was given to the police officer um, was illogical. <laughs> Well, you can be sure when it's a fire issue, the fire department has the responsibility. It doesn't matter what someone told the police officer. I know Vanessa got an email back from the chief about the actions they've taken. Um, if they believed they needed a full 24-hour fire watch, as they have in this project in the past, they would assign it. Um, the fire department does not take any chances whatsoever. The fire watch was on the site prior to For demolition, demo. correct. But there's no fire suppression there is no need for a 24-hour fire watch in the, in the judgment of the chief right now. That was an accident. It was a faulty piece of equipment. They are inspecting more often, but they do not believe that that's a recurring situation. Half of the site is not lit up as it is supposed to have all, always lit up. All times. There are Massachusetts laws about what must be lit, and some of the neighbors are complaining too much is lit. So that's up to the contractor to walk that fine line. Um, we have received complaints, and you'll see in here glare from lighting on December 5th, for instance. So I don't know. On December 5th, we had a call that there was too much glare from overnight lighting. So the contractor has rules to follow. Um, I was in a uh, post office pre-construction meeting yesterday. The actual lighting needing during construction is actually fairly low. Um, some contractors choose to turn it up a little bit more for safety, but the actual requirements are somewhat low. I, I encourage you to, tonight, on your way home, go by the site and you'll see that half of it is completely dark and half of it is brightly lit. So it's not as if there is some moderate lighting being used throughout the site. It's full on on one side and on the front side, on the front side. Can, can I, I just, I mean, Cadence, all the stuff that you, that you talked about, um, you know, it's a construction site, some of it's going to be good, some of it's going to be bad, and some of it's going to be ugly, but one of the things that you just said really, really troubled me, and, mm -hmm. and, and maybe I didn't hear it right, and hopefully you could um, go into a little bit more that you feel that you, yourself and other people are afraid to call the police? Okay, Barry, I don't think that's an appropriate okay. conversation. I, I just, 
Yeah. All, all I want to say is, is that nobody in this town should be afraid to pick up the phone, right? If there's a problem, to, to call. So I, I don't. We don't need to get into it. But I, I just, you know, I, I just, I couldn't let that comment slip by. Sorry. I think. Um, thank you, Cadence. Uh, we, we need to move on. But um, it, it is. I'm glad that Bob has uh, reached out, or Gene reached out to the. Um, the builder um, regarding the noise before seven, whether it's construction related or not, and it, you know what's concerning to me is that we're not getting a little more cooperation. Um, maybe they don't have to do it by law, but um, yeah. But no, we'll continue to work on that. Thank you. Um, anyone else? Yes. Hi, Carl Labachi, 494 Main Street. Yes. Candidate for Select Board. My comment is not related to that. Um, over 50 uh, over fifty years now, uh, the Intramos has been in business, and if many of you know, it's closing. I was here recently at a meeting with over 20 other businesses, uh, mostly resident, res mostly resi Reading residents, um, opposing the split tax and the already implemented commercial property tax increase. Um, as many of you know, small business owners contribute a lot to the community. With the loss of Leslie and the countless contributions she made, I feel that is a detriment to the town. Those are for personal reasons why she is closing or leaving, but that doesn't take away the fact that another business is closing or uh, As the former owner of the Chocolate Truffle and a commercial property owner, I feel that certain board members are going down the wrong path and ignoring the voices of the small business owners. And that is one of the reasons I'm looking for something. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, anyone else? Okay. Um, over to you, Bob, for town manager. <clears throat> Thank you. I'll be quick. Um, just for the board, uh, please note that three dates of your proposed meetings in the fall were changed due to a Jewish holiday, so I apologize for oh, that thanks. oversight. It's several months from now. Yeah. Um, uh, Julie left, but I, I certainly support everything the board said, but I also want to mention that Julie has been kind enough to uh, agree to host a downtown meeting. The date is not yet picked. It'll either be February or early March. Um, the downtown business community is going to be invited to gather to get an update on the post office project, which is most appropriate, as well as an update on the town's wayfinding efforts. So thanks, Julie. Just, she's a great community partner in so many ways. Oh, is there a date for that? We have to, okay, that? yeah, they need to set that. Um, for the board's um, awareness, uh, John brought this to us a couple weeks, a couple months ago maybe. Uh, the unsafe crossing on Lowell Street for folks that want to walk to the library. Mm -hmm. um, we have scoped out a project, got an indication of price of $16,000, and before we proceeded with work, because I will need to ask town meeting in April for that money, I just wanted to make sure the board is okay with that direction. That would be one of those uh, signals like on Bay State Road? I believe that, yes, actuated. now that that's not okay. illegal, correct. Okay. Yeah, pedestrian, act, pedestrian actuated. So unless I hear differently from the board, I, I just want to update you. Two, that's two or one? Um, that's two, I think. Not two locations. I believe it's one location. One location. Yeah, and I'm not sure yeah. which street. I know they looked at two streets. It's, you know, if you to remember, it was the it was to manage the foot traffic. Yes. Right. Um, yeah. You know, daytime foot traffic, particularly among many of our <clears throat> retired citizens. And, yes. And then afternoon traffic for kids on their way home from school on their way to the library. The library is created. In a, in a good way, right. a lot more foot traffic headed across that road, yeah. and anybody that's tried to cross that road in that area knows you take your life in your hands. So that's this is the idea that you know you can actually have a pedestrian get the traffic to stop and yeah. get across. So I, I hope you all continue to endorse that idea that uh, that I brought here. I I think it's something we need to do. Yeah, I do. I just would quickly ask: Are there any any reservations that anyone would like to say? Otherwise, uh, Bob can continue pursuing his path. Okay. No, that's great. Great. Thanks, Bob. Um, yesterday, we had about a 25-person uh, staff meeting with the developer of the construction company for the post office project. Um, as, as John mentioned last night with his last hurdle, so they have technically not filed for a lot of paperwork waiting for last night. I didn't get an update today, but it wouldn't surprise me if they were in at 7 o'clock this morning. 
the um, fellow doing the construction is very experienced doing tight construction in inner city, so I'm sure they'll be able to manage that. Um, we discussed, obviously, minimizing the amount of time that Haven Street would ever have to be closed. Mm -hmm. uh, possibly one lane, but to close it would be very difficult, and they're fully aware of that. Um, someone has mentioned uh, Leslie Leahy and the pitching post. It's certainly a remarkable milestone. That business has been around for a long time, even before Leslie. It's uh, very sad to see it go. Um, quite often you'll hear from a small business owner that the town is not supportive. Um, some issues come out of this building, but I have to tell you from discussion with Le Leslie and others, it's because people in this town do not shop at local stores. They go to the Amazon, they go to the mall in Linfield, whatever. If you want these businesses to succeed, please shop at them. I'm not a shopper. They created men's bench, uh, men's benches outside of stores for me. <laughs> I'm the worst advocate of this, but I'm very sympathetic that for people in this town that want to encourage small businesses, the best way you can do it is to shop in those businesses. Um, we have some really, really good ones, and that's all I have for tonight. Thank you. And we're, um, a question. You know, the, the, the board has put together a subcommittee to uh, revitalize uh, the Economic uh, <coughs> Development uh, Committee. It'll be in some other name, but the whole idea of that will be to help small businesses and help Main Street um, stay vibrant. Uh, Barry. And just actually, just uh, you know, perfect segue to that. I know at when we did the budget, we did sort of endorse the, the hiring of uh, a three more year for an economic development director. I just wanted to ask you yep. real quick, you know, job description done is it going to go out? So like where we are with that? So. Yeah, um, Julie, um, well, Jean Delios and um, Judy Perkins primarily have worked together to revise the job description. What we need today is very different than when we hired Andrew Corona. Um, they expect to get that done. I know they met or they exchanged emails today. I expect within a week or so uh, that job description will get out there. I'll let you know, certainly, okay, what right. it does. That'd be great. Yep. And just so you know, uh, we tried to offer the job to Jay Ash, but he had other things to do. <laughs> uh, sure. Right. You never know. That's all. Thank you. That's all. Okay. Um, we're running a little late here. I do think that um, the... How many people are here for the Millet land discussion? Okay, uh, we can't skip that. So we're just going to have to uh, uh, plow ahead. Um, the first action item is managing Millet land, and I will let Bob uh, present that. Uh, thank you. It's, it's very simple, uh, Mr. Chair and others. Um, well, it's very simple for me to present it. It was very complex. Uh, town Council had a research back to 1937 town meeting actions. And uh, the rumor was that 1937 town meeting had done something that it never did. The long and short of it is, uh, this, there's parcels that are in the motion that are still under the care, custody, and control of the board. Uh, the motion that's presented will allow the Conservation Commission to continue to take care of that property. There's two motions with two portions of that. Um, in the longer run, um, the board and the Conservation um, Commission can certainly have a discussion about transferring the title, but for now, uh, Town Council uh, believed, and I agree, that in order to allow them to continue to do their fine work there, the board should pass these motions and allow it since the transfer never happened. There had been other actions taken after then, yeah. um, but because the 1937 uh, action was defective, it didn't matter that the following uh, actions were taken. Yeah. So, so, so do, you, do, do, motion? Do, do we have a, a motion? Do get a, a motion for your, this? Your packet tonight should have motions. No questions before I read them. Oh, uh, make a motion. Uh, moves at the board, move the select board vote to one, ratify the Conservation Commission's management of two parcels of land shown on the assessor's records as plot 26, lot 32, and 50, formerly plot 99, lots 2 and 21, held under the board's care, custody, and control. And two, authorize the Conservation Commission to continue managing said parcels as open space on behalf of the board. Um, second. 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 Thank you, Barry. Um, any discussion on this topic? So, is, I mean, is it, is it my understanding that basically it's it's um, the conservation will just continue to manage it and, and uh, keep 
care for it? Uh, you know, basically it's going to remain as is? Or what? Yeah, if you pass this motion, you will allow them to. It'll be then their choice. I would hope they would. Uh, All right. Okay. And so will this initiate the previous action that they were going to take, or will that start a whole new public hearing process? I don't know. That's really up to them. It's somewhat of a technicality. Um, it's really up to them to decide the best path forward, and if they need town council advice, we'd certainly provide it. And again, presumably in the longer run, which could be any period of time, but not in the next month, um, you know, there may be a future town meeting request, uh, request to actually transfer the land to conservation, if that makes sense for all concerned. What's the time frame for that, Bob? Uh, well, we've waited 81 years, so. <laughs> so this is a custodial. Right? Yeah, I, I would say this is a pretty good November uh, target for next year. Okay. Whatever discussion both boards need to have uh, town council involved is necessary. Shouldn't be a problem. Okay. Great. Yeah. Thanks. Um, any more? To, any further discussion by the board? Um, all in favor? All right. Five zero. Yeah. You had, there were, uh, were there two motions. That's the license. No. That's the license. Next item. You got a license. Oh, yeah. there were two items under the motion. Got it. Yeah. All right. So um, next up are the class two licenses. I know uh, we have a gentleman here representing the applicant, um, and I asked Bob to review the uh, specifics of this. Yeah, I would just ask the applicant to present his case. It's quite could, quite straightforward. Uh, ask, uh, my name is Manny Rabbit, and unfortunately, one would think the ears would have lasted <laughs> a little bit longer, but but they but they didn't. And if, uh, if the board or anybody that has any questions, <clears throat> we'd be more than happy to answer them. Mr. Ciano is here tonight. He is sitting in the back. Yep. He has been a um, resident of Reading for 35 years. Yep. <clears throat> His um, building, which is owned by Onaic Realty Trust, uh, and Mr. Ciano is the trustee. Mm -hmm. And in the package, we um, forwarded uh, a deed to show the ownership. Mm -hmm. uh, we have the $25,000 bond as driver's license. And we are applying for permission to have eight automobiles, none of which will be parked on Main Street. Mm -hmm. There will be approximately four of the vehicles parked in the back of the building. It's a class two used car license. There would be approximately two cars parked in the garage of the building, and the other two would probably be in front of the garage. So there would be eight, a maximum of eight at any time. And again, I would be you know, happy to answer any questions. We submitted some pictures yep. of the building. And it is in compliance with zoning. The zone is a business A zone, and the sale of automobiles used or new is allowed in a business A zoning. So we're not asking for special permits, variances, what have you. Mr. Siena, any classic cars? I'm sorry? Any classic cars? <laughs> Uh, yeah, anyway. Maybe. Maybe a car. Okay. Now, these would be um, probably uh, lower end price vehicles, meaning around five, six, seven thousand dollar $7,000 type range yeah. as compared to uh, you know, very expensive automobiles. Again, if the market dictates that, we can change that. All right. Uh, any questions from the board? Yes, uh, um, just to give the staff angle, uh, police department reviewed the application thoroughly. They have no objections. Mm -hmm. uh, staff re reviewed the application and have no conditions to propose. Sometimes there's an obvious condition to propose to the board. I would suggest, though, that uh, as with any license, uh, things come along uh, through the practice. Um, you know, if the public has some issues, the butters have issues, they should come see the board, and there could be conditions put on the license in the future. But again, at this time, the staff had no recommendations. All right. 
Yeah. Mr. Ciano's been a businessman in this town for many years. He's looking to expand his business enterprise in a properly zoned property. Yeah. He's looking for a license. Um, I'm sorry? In a properly zoned property, he's looking to expand his, his yeah. business operation. And again, nothing would be on, yeah. no vehicles would be on Main Street. Okay. And the vehicles parked behind the building yes. would not even be visible from Main Street, nor are they very visible from top and terrace. Yeah. Which is Mr. Ciano's property. All of the vehicles will be on Mr. Ciano's property. Yep. Uh, Vanessa? Are there any abutters in the audience? Sorry. Are there any abutters in the audience? Any, any neighbors who might have concerns? Just want to make sure we covered our bases. Um, further discussion? Can we make a motion? Oh, I have a motion. We need, uh, sorry. Let's make uh, the motion first. Uh, move to select board approve the class two license as presented. Um, that's all. That's it. No, second. I'm taking your motion. Um, second. Second. Thank you, John. Um, I think we've had a discussion. Just one final. Uh, anybody? Okay. Good. Um, all in favor? All right. Approved. So approved. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Good Thank luck you. with your business. Thank you. Um, so next up is, 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 uh, the, uh, is a presentation um, by the Cultural Council. Um, I think it's scheduled to last maybe 20 minutes. Um, and then we'll get to the, the 40B project here in, in Wakefield after that. Um, so, um, yeah, if the Cultural Council um, could come up. Do you have a PowerPoint or anything? Uh, you yeah. We need last year's uh, survey. I still the numbers too. I would. I have the survey. Sure. Did you want that? Okay. Thank you. Why don't the we just stand over here? I don't mind. I'll sit over there. Maybe come on. Thank you for having us. It's our um, pleasure to be here to, to let you know about the Reading Cultural Council and um, to let our fellow citizens know about the Reading Cultural Council. <laughs> Um, my name is Marianne Kozlowski. I'm one of the members, and um, we're going to have the rest of our membership introduce themselves. I'm Rose Lewis. Don Shankle. Nora Bucko. Brian Kimmer. Peggy Philip Perry. And James Perry. <laughs> and Nancy Zulak is also on the committee and isn't here tonight. And we meet um, in the senior center on the first Monday of the month at 7 o'clock. If you ever like to join us and listen to what it is that we do. So um, quickly, we're taking this opportunity to let you know that Reading has a cultural council. We're one of 329 local cultural councils in the state of Massachusetts. Um, the, these are local organizations that receive funds from the Massachusetts Cultural Council to dispense to support arts in our communities. And the Massachusetts Cultural Council gets its funding from the state legislature. They allocate funds that then get allocated down to the local cultural council based on population. And the state allocation can be enhanced by grants that the Massachusetts Cultural Council has received from the Endowment for the Arts and other organizations. <clears throat> so we've introduced ourselves. So one of the questions is who is eligible for grants? So. Um, our, we were able to set some criteria for grant dispensing in Reading, and we wanted it to be organizations and individuals that offer cultural and experiential programs for our residents aged 1 to 100, so really spanning the generations of our community. Um, and these could be field trips, during and after school programs, concerts, festivals, lectures, theater, music, visual art programs, dance, uh, film and so much more and we, um, our criteria is that they have been ready. So they could be at schools, at the youth center, in our parks, in the library, lots of places in town. The process is that 
every fall, the state opens up an application process. It's an online application process, MassachusettsCulturalCouncil.org, select Reading, and individuals who wish to seek funds from the Cultural Council apply um, using an online form. Form closes in mid-October, and then from, um, from that point on through December, we look at the applications. In uh, November, we invite people who have applied for grant funding to our meeting to talk about their project and advocate for it. We make our allocation decisions in, in December, and then by the end of December, we'll let organizations know whether they've received funds, and those who have received funds, we notify in January. Any questions? Um, so we have um, some, the fine print here is the criteria. One application per organization, because the funds aren't huge, and we try to make them go as far as we can to support as many organizations as we can. Programs need to be performed in an accessible Reading venue, with the exception, obviously, of field trips. Programs um, need to have a confirmed artist, venue, and performance date. They must have an alternative source of funding because given the amount of applications that we receive, we receive as well as the amount of funds that we have to dispense, um, we can't fully fund anything. And, and you'll see in a few minutes what I mean when I say that. And um, grants are reimbursement based, which means that the organization receiving a grant from the Reading Cultural Council pays for the project, then submits a, um, a, an invoice to us and we pay our component of, of that project. So on the reverse side of this piece of paper, you will see the awards that we made this year. So just for those who don't have a piece of paper, it's an expensive list. Um, so <clears throat> 22 different organizations. Um, so we were allowed um, allocated $7,300 from the Massachusetts Cultural Council, and we used 25 requests totaling totaling $23,000, a little bit more than $23,000. And this is the largest number of requests that we've received in recent memory, as well as um, the largest amount, total amount of projects, uh, cost of projects. Um, so we tried to support as many viable organizations as we could, viable meaning organizations that meet our criteria. Um, and so the most that we were able to allocate this year was $500, which in some years when the, um, the, the number of requests are fewer, we, can, we have been able to in the past award as much as $2,000 to some organizations. Um, so we're very excited that there's so much interest in art in Reading, um, but we're really a little bit concerned that $7,300 doesn't go very far, and in particular in a, in a community where there is an interest in, in the arts, and we hear that the select board is interested in fostering um, an, an art um, area of the community, an arts dis cultural district of our community, um, we'd like to propose that perhaps the town of Reading would match what the Cultural Council awards us, because we really don't want to stifle innovation and creativity in our town, um, mm -hmm. to supplement what we have so that we can be more generous in how we support local organizations. Um, yeah. I'm going to pass the meeting over to Barry. My wife runs one of these <laughs> um, these organizations. I'll step outside the room no, and, and when uh, I, I feel more, really more I think you're doing great yeah, work. Just, um, don't say anything. But we're not going to discuss their. Yes, we won't discuss the funding discussion. <laughs> okay, right. all right. All the decisions for the year have been made this year. That's right. 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 Okay, and I can't um, weigh in on whether to match funding or anything like that. I think that would be inappropriate. Well, we, we just felt this was an opportunity where we don't always get to stand in front of this organization, well. this board. So I might as well make a pitch right. to support <laughs> the arts and innovation in Reading. Yes. Yeah. Bob. Um, I, before you said that, I was wondering, I know this is state grant money, which always has fans. Um, is there any way for the public to privately support this? That's an interesting, I, I don't know the answer to that, but we could investigate. 
Okay. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. No. Some, sometimes I mean, certainly the public possible. can donate to any of these yep, right. organizations. I that's that's better not through us. Um, right. But Although, I mean, I think the, that Bob's on to something. And by the way, Marianne and all of you, thanks for coming. I mean, <laughs> this is... Um, it's kind of nice to hear good stories like this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we don't we don't hear them as often as we should. Probably, unfortunately, we don't manage any purse strings. Do you, I don't know if you know that or not. I mean, you might think we're important, but we aren't that important. <laughs> they don't trust us with the money. Well, in that case, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you know, I think this is. Some, I think your presentation needs to find its way to town meeting. They, you know, they manage the money, and I think that that's a really great idea. And I, I further think that Bob is on to something. I think that if people realized, if there was a way, for example, to contribute to what you were doing, when you look at the scope of what you're accomplishing here, with not, when you think about, in one pile, that's a lot of money, in this many piles, it's not a lot. I mean, you really got it's got to go a long way. Um, and I suspect that um, people would be very inclined to be interested in supporting, you know, your your group financially. Um, and I think I don't see any reason why we wouldn't be able to do that. I mean, I I know that you know. Is this a? This is money from the states. Right. It's always the state through the Massachusetts. Yes, but their group is not. We're ready. It, it, We're ready. Yeah, you're ready. Right. Okay, and you're not. You're not an advisory committee to us. You're not. A, you're not a municipal committee. I don't believe they're a nonprofit. Okay, are but. Are you a five hundred one c three? Yeah. So that's the big question. Are you a nonprofit? No, they're not. No. That's the problem. So that actually is something that you know is worth exploring, um, and it's not as difficult as you might think, given the nature of what you do. Uh, you might find yourself being able to do support a lot more. I, one of the questions I have for you: it, so, if you, if there was a match, let's say, so instead of seventy three hundred, you had fifteen thousand. Would you want to do more organizations or fund more fully the organizations you're funding? Is that, have you thought about yes. that? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. It, it just depends on who applies. Right. So you don't have any control over well, more so. well, if there was more money out there, maybe more people would apply. Uh, yes, you know, right. So. Right. And then I love the idea that you spread it around, though. I, mean, and I think I that's said, a great idea. There have been years where we've awarded certain organizations as much as $2,000, which was just, didn't feel right this year because so many organizations were doing good work. And um, we wanted to share some of the wealth from the state with them. I think this is a really strong message that you're you're that you're kind of requiring that whoever applies to you doesn't expect doesn't have the expectation of a full ride that they're participating and you're participating and you're getting to lots of them I, and we're very clear about that especially on the um, evening when they come in and talk to us we make sure that they understand that it's reimbursement based and that there's so many applying that they can't hope for um, a giant chunk of money from I think that's a great message really I think it's a it's a fair it's a neighborly message actually yes. um, and plus this and year the uh, 375th Reading yes. has has actually initiated some increase in yeah. um, grants that to particularly support that certainly and they don't come around that often you know <laughs> <laughs> every 375 years I guess yeah. but, uh, but the other thing to point out is we have some really real gems in our town like the community singers and the community orchestra and the symphony orchestra and the reading art association and the um the coffee shop uh, the coffee oh, court the, uh, the ivy court coffee house and it would be a crime not to be able to support these because they add to the vitality and the richness of our community so we're really happy to be able to do that i, I noticed that like in our in our packet today it, it kind of came a little bit late but you had the results of the survey and and i know um that you sort of were Required, but I mean, if, you, if the state is giving you money, you have to kind of go out and ask people, kind of, you know, what is it you want. One of the things that, um, I, and, and tell me if I read this wrong, but Stand over here so you can see that. maybe um, I think when you did the survey, you got maybe 70 or 80 responses back. I think one of the things that sort of kind of build the momentum 
is that, and one way I think that we can definitely help, because I, did I understand correctly that now you have to survey every year? Yeah. Yes. That we could maybe do a much better job in helping get this survey out to more people. And when we think about when we did the override, we got 2,000 responses back, right? I mean, that kind of gives you an idea of what people are thinking. I don't think we ever get 2,000, but, but what would this survey look like instead of 80 responses, there were 300, yeah. right? Certainly there's interest because anybody who gets money from any of these organizations is going to tell their friends to do it. And that gives you and us as a town the kind of the, you know, what's the appetite for supporting arts in Reading so that if there ever does come to the possibility where maybe there could be some funds from the town, now you've sort of built up the, you know, kind of, this is what people want, this is what people want to do. So I think when, when it comes time uh, for you to go out into the field and do this survey again, that, you know, work with, um, and I know I'm your liaison and I will certainly help with that, but also, you know, through the town, we, you know, we have SurveyMonkey, we have, you know, we have our, we have our, uh, our town website, our town, face you know, we could get this out there so that people actually, um, because 80 people, that's great, but it would look better, you know, what would it look like if there was more people we did that responded? The town survey month, right. um, but also last year, but, but, there, but sure, also just to get the word out people that people actually know about where yes. to go and get that. And, and, and so I think that that's something... Bob, that's not something. That's not hard. We can. No, we did. Yeah, we can. We can do that and just maybe advertise it a little bit better so that we get more, um, more responses back. The other, the other thing um, that's of note is that while you know each one of these groups, you know, well, it's only three hundred bucks or four hundred bucks. I would imagine because uh, you would know better because you interviewed them all, that some that, that 300 bucks might have been the difference between them being able to do what they want to do and doing nothing, right? And so, um, you know, because there's so many of them and they do have to get their funding from other places. So, you know, the idea that there's, you know, you're giving to as many people as possible and that just, and that, and that builds it up. One other comment that I have is that um, when we did get the presentation, um, I noticed, I mean, I know a lot of you were here and there's a lot of work probably going through all this. Um, if anybody's in the audience or watching on TV, I did notice that there are three openings for associate you. members yes. Yes. on your committee. So if anybody is out there thinking that they want to contribute to arts in Reading and to really help forward this, um, it's very easy to apply um, on the town website if you want to become a, a member of this group. Um, maybe I'll join soon, you know, <laughs> if I'm not busy elsewhere. But um, I think what you guys do is terrific and um, it's really, um, you know, the work and, and goes into it and the fact that so many, if you think about how many people belong to Arts Reading or the Colonial Chorus of Coolidge, Middle, you know, the, uh, the Olympiad. If you add up all the people that actually support it, who are in those organizations, it probably it's probably about as many as in Reading Youth Lacrosse or Reading Youth Baseball. About the actual number of people who participate in, or in these organizations. So it's not just oh, it's the arts, a couple of people doing this or a couple of people doing that. It's really probably the whole town. So I, I, I commend you all on that. Thank you. Look, look forward to Thank working with you. Here. And just to add to the survey point, if you look through the survey, you'll note that people were asking for programming for pretty much. Um, all ages in town, and I think that the, the grants that we awarded reflect that. The organizations yes. reflect yeah. that it's from the very young to senior center, uh, patrons of the senior center. So, Marianne, how do you spread your message? How do, how do these organizations well, we're know kind of to We're afraid. Apply? I mean, no. look Pardon at me? this. Look yeah. at this. I mean, right. no, I know. I, I guess what I'm. People is less money. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. we advertise <laughs> on your community connection. We. we Put up ads on at the library on their um, their digital board and also throughout the library. We have signs on the common weeks before, so those are some of the ways that, that we access an email. We have an email list. We have an email list. It's, it's pretty. pretty it's, it's grown quite. Yeah. It's yeah. The hundreds large. now. We, we, we worked on that over the last couple. I'm sure, years. all the people who got awards this year are kind of like they're just waiting for when the things get announced so they can put in their applications. It's consistently October 15th every year, so basically once you know, find you know that that's pretty much what it will be. This is a great presentation. You're doing really good things. Thank I'm you. glad we I'm glad, I'm glad we got you in here. Yeah. yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you for having us. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate your support. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.
Yeah. Um, we're gonna. I'm sorry to do this to the 40B uh, Wakefield people, but um, several of us need to see a man about a horse. So um, we're gonna go uh, take a five minute break.
session, and we're moving on to the discussion about the 40B uh, Tarrant Lane project in Wakefield. Uh, I wanted to say a few things before we got started, and then I'm going to ask Bob to give a brief um, summary of a study that one of our engineers did on the impact of, uh, regarding the impact on the town. Um, but we've I, I counted in our packet about 35 letters on this issue. Um, so it's obviously, um, that's a lot of correspondence for us. Um, it's, so it's obviously important, we feel it's important for you all to um, have the chance to speak on the issue. Uh, the, the, Correct me if I'm wrong, Bob, but the ultimate purpose of this of this subject is to pro provide Bob with ideas and select board direction um, for a letter that he'll write to the Wakefield ZBA. Um, um, I'll probably write it to the town administrator. I talked to him about 4 o'clock, but he's expecting it tomorrow, and then he'll pass it along, but same idea. Excellent. Um, and... Um, and that, so that way Phil will have it in time for their ZBA meeting uh, tomorrow night. Um, we should make it, Bob made it clear to us that we, the town has no legal standing in this, in this matter. But that doesn't mean we can't try to uh, plead, plead our case to, to, to wait for them. So, um, Bob, if you would be ready to give a brief overview of Ryan's uh, Certainly. engineering report. Yeah, let me um, give the room just an overview of the resources that we have um, devoted to this. If you go to the town's webpage and you look under select board at the top, it says boards. If you choose select board, if I'm able to figure this, live TV is never good. Um, on the left-hand side, um, the town staff has actually put up a lot of documents relating to this project because um, we noticed Wakefield hadn't done it yet. So these are all the submittals that the Wakefield CBA has. I'm going to use a few of them tonight, not every one of them, and I don't think there's any reason you'd all need to look at each one, but I just wanted to make you aware that that's there. And the first document, the table of contents, described what is there just for your use. Um, I think the most logical place to start is with a map. Um, these lines that you see are the town boundaries. This is the town's GIS system, which normally stops at the boundary, uh, but happily in this instance did go into Wakefield so we can see a little more detail. Just to give everyone perspective, South Street, Hopkins Street, um, the, the triangle I've outlined with the three red marks are where is proposed uh, construction. What is not shown, because again it's in Wakefield, right here you see shades of very large multifamily housing projects in Wakefield. On this side of Summit Drive, right here, I think there's three buildings. And on the other side of Summit is some Reading, um, Reading projects. So again, the construction area, which I'll show you a little more detail, is here. Um, in early December, <coughs> the town staff in what's called a design review team met to discuss this project, just as we would any project in Reading. Um, the difference being that, for instance, the fire chief is not going to comment on how they're doing their work because it's in Wakefield. But we looked at it from the perspective of how could this project impact Reading. So certainly our engineers um, had a lot of opinions, and we'll concentrate those opinions on the two intersections of uh, Hopkins Street here in Maine and then um, South Street in Maine, obviously. Um, but just to give you kind of the lay of the land, that's, that's the best map I could find. <clears throat> um, visually, this is how that map looks. So you can see these are the Wakefield high-density high housing projects that already exist that I described. And this is an outline of the property. This is the old military housing that's going to be demolished. And again, that gives you a good view of, of where we're talking about. And these are some of the Reading neighbors right here. Yeah. 
this gives you a slightly better look. This is a Wakefield map um, into what some of the uh, access could be. Um, here's the project, and again, some of the access could be into other parts of Wakefield and Stoneham, just to show that it's not all impacted on Reading. I don't really think this will be useful to use tonight, but just so you're aware, there's a detailed site plan available on the town's website, and it has much more detailed information about what is proposed to be built. So you can see different locations and different things. Again, I don't think for tomorrow night that's of high concern to the neighbors, but just so you're aware, it's there. This is the best picture of what is being proposed. So you can see a lot of parking between the high-dense housing in, in Wakefield and this new proposal. This is really right along 128. Again, I'm, I'm not going to go into this in detail, but there's an extensive 40-odd page traffic study that Wakefield has done for this project. Um, our engineers reviewed it extensively. I'll summarize some of their findings. Uh, the most useful parts, uh, should you choose to look, are the last two or three pages, which are conclusions and recommendations. And again, Reading will expound on some of these. So that, that gives you a little bit of an outline of the resources available to the public. Um, now I want to get into what Reading did and what Reading suggested. So again, this is a memo written after the meeting we had in early December. It describes what the group looked at. There was about 15 or 16 of town employees in the room that looked at it. Public safety, public works, planning, engineering, uh, health was there, and so on. There's, there's four main comments, three that are probably not too interesting. Um, Stormwater drainage is collected within the property. It has no impact on Reading. Sewer is also discharged directly into Wakefield sewer system. It has no impact on Reading. Uh, water, there's a bit of a question mark next to. Um, we had prepared to supply them water and had to actually offer them a letter that we could. Uh, since then, they've been in interest in trying to do it themselves, and they're doing some bridge construction over 128 right now. And although they have not said this to us, we assume that that bridge would house a pipe of water just like Reading gets its water uh, from down south. So right now, Wakefield is preparing to connect their own water supply, so that would mean no impact on Reading. If they do not go that route, there may be an impact on Reading, but we won't discuss that tonight because they're not planning on it as of this minute. Um, and that leaves us with the traffic study, which is the most interesting part, certainly. The uh, traffic study showed uh, it would generate 68 new vehicle trips in the morning and 84 during the weekday evening peak. 65% of those are projected to use the South, that South Street intersection that I showed you, which is, shouldn't be a big surprise. Um, most of the traffic, well, let me go back to the map. Presumably, most of the traffic from here that's going to go north, I would assume, would go up Hopkins Street right here, a certain percent. But if you're going to go south, east, or west, you're probably going to use South Street and get on to 128 and then potentially 93 in either direction. Um, so that's the assumption. Um, the bad news is the South Street Main Street intersection is already horrible, and this is only going to make it worse. So <coughs> technically speaking, there is uh, a service level description Interesting. I must have closed it. <clears throat> um, LOS, level of service, is a measure from A to F, just like grades in grade school. Uh, a is an intersection where no one lives any or travels on it, and F is a disaster. Uh, and this is projected to go from an E, which is terrible, to an F, which is a disaster, during certain hours of the day. Not surprisingly, during, during rush hour, during commuting hour. Um, just to jump to the staff recommendations, a sidewalk on South Street, probably on the north side, but really on either side, whatever side the developer would choose, would greatly increase pedestrian safety. One thing we're not sure about, but we wondered, is uh, how much pedestrian traffic and bike traffic might this site generate. And if they wish to get to Calarusos or to Reading in general, 
Um, South Street's not a good street for them to do that on. It's twisty, the line of sight is poor. Um, I believe the um, utility poles are on the south side of South Street, so it would make more sense probably to build a sidewalk on the north side. Um, but then we saw trees and we saw rock walls, so this is not an easy solution. But we do believe that um, for safety, that for pedestrian, pedestrian and bike safety, that um, a, a sidewalk there would greatly improve um, safety for everyone. But yeah. are, are these being offered in the spirit of proposed mitigation members that the developer would pay for? Yes. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, Certainly, South Street itself is going to need to be repaved and improved. It's going to be a significant, well, it's going to be, during certain hours of the day, significantly more traffic. We think South Street needs to be upgraded, and again, this is something we'd ask Wakefield to pay for. Uh, currently, <coughs> regrading and much better signage. Again, there's the, there's the water comments. So to go back to the map, My documents are disappearing here, <coughs> such as they are. Um, again, we're concerned with the two intersections, South Street being the most impacted and going from a level of service E to F, which is poor. Um, because it's so near the off-ramp for 128, we know from experience, it is virtually impossible for the state to approve any improvement to that intersection. There's already signalization. Perhaps the signal timing can be changed. We've asked the DOT to look into that. We assume, well, I'll, I'll tell you right now, uh, in terms of safety, the number one priority to which there is no number two is never have backups on 128, which I understand. So the lights are timed to never have a backup on this off-ramp, you know, never being except for Foxborough. So we don't know, but we're guessing that the signals are already timed as much as they can to allow east-west traffic. And if that's true, a change in the signals will not be possible and will not improve the situation. Um, if Mass Dot comes back and says there could be an improvement, at least at the margin, that could help. Um, but we're not overly optimistic because of the proximity to 128 that there's going to be much mitigation possible through uh, traffic light timing. Um, I, I don't even know how you would reconfigure the area to be safer. I, I have some better news on the Hopkins Street area, and, and one would think, especially if this intersection is tough, that over time people will learn if they're going north or even going west or east to find a different way uh, to travel this way. Um, this intersection is and has been understudied by the state for quite some time. They are at a 75% design. Um, they are studying every direction, south, north, east, west, of this intersection, all four roads. Um, there will be a suggestion and a, a very likely project to signalize this intersection. So it'll become uh, much uh, safer. What intersection is there? I can't see your um, Hopkins and South. Hopkins I'm sorry, South, Hopkins yeah. and Maine. Hopkins and South would be tough. Hopkins and Maine. Right. Yeah, let me just enlarge it for you there. Right here. Right, by Fusilis. Um We looked today with the town engineer, the 75% the design, which is, is going to show a lot. Um, still only has one lane coming out in this direction, so there will be no right-hand turn lane, if you will. Um, they're going to reconfigure this piece right here to be a little more difficult to make a left turn from Main Street. However, because there'll be traffic lights, it'll thus therefore become much easier. But if you're trying to trying to travel uh, due west from Hopkins onto Hopkins, you're going to have to make a jig, a jig and a jog up there. But again, through signalization, we think this intersection will be greatly improved. Um, this is all state funded, and right now the timing is unfortunately a tiny bit behind what this 40B expects. Uh, but within a year of when the 40B is complete, this intersection should be done. So it should be done by 2022. I think the Wakefield 40B says 18 months construction from, from approval. That probably puts it into 2021. So uh, to the extent um, there is traffic on Hopkins, I think that'll work out okay. To the extent there's traffic on South, it's just going to be tough. Well, Staff, when you think that yeah. the, there's probably going to be as many <coughs> construction workers on a project that size as there are going to be people living there later. Certainly I mean, the amount the of vehicles months, yes. are going to be, you know, instant. Um, it's, yes, not gonna, it's not going to be 18 months from now when the project's done. Right. Um, 
Yeah, and, and we believe from our discussion with Wakefield and anyone that's been to his EBA meeting, I have not, may know better, but the construction calls for site parking, not off-site parking. As you can see, it's huge. Right, yeah. But they uh, got to get there. And oh, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. The, yeah, yeah, yeah they'll know, most likely a lot of the will come the, off of 128 and, and bang a right onto South Street. And they'll be there at 630. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, staff so looked at improvements to Hopkins Street. Mm -hmm. It's actually in pretty good shape. Um, we talked about potentially putting a sidewalk there, putting a bike path. Um, it really doesn't seem to call for that the way South Street does. Um, it seems like a much better visibility and safe road, if, if you will. So that's the basis of staff's work. Um, the point of the public comment tonight is to flesh out any other suggestions you might have. I'm then happy to um, create a letter with the board's approval and send to Wakefield tomorrow. Tomorrow night is their continued ZBA hearing. So record wa uh, Reading wants to go on the record as soon as possible. Uh, we, don't, we don't think they're going to finish their work tomorrow, but uh, in an ongoing process, it's just good to be heard. Did they say they were going to try to expedite this project? Yeah, it, it'll, be, it'll be relatively fast, but I don't, I don't think it's going to be finished tomorrow. They said five meetings, I think, when okay. I was there. Um, so that captures it in a nutshell. Again, nutshell. Again, we don't have a legal standing in this. The developer, uh, developer's attorney, is the same one working on Eaton Lakeview, so we have a good working relationship. He's a pretty good guy. Um, we certainly have a good working relationship between the two municipalities. We do a lot together. So I, I believe your voices will be heard as loudly as they can be from a community that's not Wakefield. That's really the best we can offer you. So turn it back so, to the chair. Yeah, the, the, as far as proceeding, I thought the board could hear public comment and then that we could we could discuss um, the issue for basically craft what Bob was going to submit. Okay. Yes. So. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, yes. Please um, state your name and okay. My name is Jillian Dent and I need a Rhino 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 Valley Gazebo Circle. 405 Gazebo Circle and Kathy Devine wants on the drive. So what we've done is we've done kind of like a grassroots um, letter writing campaign and we have more letters to give you. Um, we're very concerned about this uh, and what we want to do is be heard about what our concerns are. So the first one which you have uh, uh, addressed is the traffic. Although I did go and read the entire traffic thing, and for me at least, if they're gonna build 190 units, I think it's a lot more than 68 morning and 84. I would say that there's gonna be at least 250 cars there in an area already where there's probably, what, 400 cars? <coughs> Close to 500 cars. I personally have been stuck in traffic on South Street for for at least 10 minutes trying to get through between 6.30 and probably 8 o'clock, 8.30. Mm -hmm. So the traffic is already pretty bad. When this thing starts to come up, which sounds like it's gonna be pretty quick, there's gonna be all these people coming on site, the traffic's gonna get 100 times worse. Um, what we'd like is for you to just maybe ask them about this traffic thing and how did they get to this, this number where, you know, the other part of the traffic was that they were going to try and mitigate people using their cars by using Lyft and Uber, which are our cars. So it's like that's the other one. They're smaller like cars. And then the other one is that they want to encourage the people to go and use uh, public transportation. So they can go to the that, Wakefield Commuter yeah. Rail, or they can go to Ray, yeah, or they can go to Redstone to catch a bus, yeah. but they can't get there. So they're saying, yeah. okay, let's have you walk or take your ride your bike, which is almost yeah. irresponsible <coughs> because the roads are so bad. Yeah. So we need to have something where, you know, they take a little bit better idea of the traffic itself. The roads are atrocious. It's like, it's bad. I get it. It shouldn't be like a Z right now. But um, I do think that if you're going to tell people that they can walk or ride their bikes, Hawkins Street needs a sidewalk as well. Okay. I think that would, you know, we really need to try and bump this up because once this thing is in, <laughs> we're done. Um, the other thing that we're very, very concerned on, besides the infrastructure, I get that, you know, you're going to do something on Hawkins Street, 
but if that's going to come late, what's going to happen is everybody's going to try and get on South Street. They're going to get stuck. They're going to go down Hopkins. We're going to have a big mess down there. And we're going to have back up there as well. So if it's not till 2020 or whenever it is that you're going to do that. But the third thing that we're very concerned about, which there's been a whole lot of swirl on this, and I know you guys don't have a, a, an answer, but we have very low water pressure. We feel yeah. that we're at the end of this water line. If you guys give them water, which is it's totally up to you, it could significantly impact our water, our water pressure. And that's really worrying a whole lot of people. Okay. So um, I've heard that the water is <coughs> on the bridge. I've heard it's here. i heard that Redding's doing it. I've heard all these different things. But yeah. I want, what I really would like, or all of us would really like, is just to fit it in. You know, and if you do give them the water, we really need somebody to take a real hard look at our water so that we're not completely messed up. I don't know about you guys, so the towers, but yeah, I don't, I don't know any, any information about the pressure overall at Summit Towers. I'm not aware of the problem there. But we've had, we've had a we really three, pretty We have two buddy days at uh, Summit Towers. We have three pumps at Summit Towers. Pumps that walk. Wakefield, Richmond, Vista, I think it is. Wakefield, Vista. They got their water from Wakefield already. And they were down between us and Tarrant Towers. Yeah. 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 So why wouldn't they get their own water? Well, it sounds I like think Bob is suggesting right. that they, that's what they're proposing right now. They have why, would we, why would we think about it? I'm sorry, why would we think about the giving them? Well, I'm not saying, we're, we're, we're not at this point. Yeah, but, but, yeah. yeah certainly, I um, just want to make sure the operative board being give water is sell water. <laughs> um, you know, if, if they needed water from Reading, as with any abutter, um, they would pay for the infrastructure improvements and they would pay for the water very clearly. Um, I'm sure our water department already knows this, but this is the first I'm hearing of a water pressure area. Is it gazebo primarily? That's the low water pressure. <coughs> I mean, we can solve that regardless of this project. Well, I say that, I'm not an engineer, but, um, you know, there's a water tank not far away, so I'm a little surprised. Well, there, yeah, there is. It's like, I... We've never, gotten a, we've never gotten a straight answer. Okay, I'll find out. Again, that's a new one to me. Uh, just as a question, um, is there any concern among the neighbors that they'll, uh, this development might possibly use Summit Drive to oh, cut out? Oh, they they go, they go. I wondered yeah. about that. Because we talked about that, and we don't. None of us live there. There's a couple Wakefield folks. I live on the other side of south of Main Street. Um, I come this way often to go over to the lake. I come down summer. Um, I don't see a lot of traffic coming out of Summer Drive at all. Right. Um, but I was curious if non-Summit people use it as a cut through. Wakefield Vista people use it. Okay. That's interesting. And that's, that's so, another point. Uh, uh, are okay. the numbers in the area? We've got 132 at Summit Village. How many at Summit Village? Uh, Wakefield Vista has over a hundred, yeah. and Summit Village has um, six. Terrace six, 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 six. So okay, so Summit, so Summit Towers, okay. Summit Village, Summit Terrace, Wakefield Vista, and then they want to draw 192 yep. units in a very dense area to begin with, and I'm not even counting yep. what is it, Reading Woods on the other side, which. Uh, does compete with the uh, South Street traffic. That's who we face yeah. as we try to go left to pick up uh, the, the, the highways. And I've read the, I read the, I cheated, I read the executive summary. I didn't read the whole, uh, the whole traffic report, but, but to me, there are so many, I want to say, absurd things in there. They're saying with 192 units, there'll be 250 new cars, but only 68 round trips in the morning. That just doesn't yeah, work yeah. sense. Um, well, just to be clear, I believe that was during peak rush hour, which is a one-hour period. So, well, who knows? But it's a two-hour. It's a two-hour. Two hours. Okay. There was. Let's see. Um, and then uh, the other thing that was here. I think uh, within this report is uh, the accidents for uh, both uh, Maine and um, Maine and South and Maine and Hopkins. And there's yeah. been quite a few accidents yeah. there uh, over the years, and I can imagine that it's only going to increase. Uh, the conclusions that, you know, take Uber, you know, ride your bike down to Redstone, all that is ridiculous. So can we do our own traffic study or yeah. can we have the developer pay for it? 
well, yeah, there's, I mean, there's EBA. Yeah, there's EBA has already asked for that, and that's what they got. Yeah. So I don't know if there's EBA is satisfied with the traffic study. Well, we are not. Right. Can okay. we tell them that we are yeah, not? Absolutely. You should absolutely say that. Yeah. But will our town officials say that? I'll, you know, I'd have to reflect that through a memo to you. That's the feeling. So, uh, so I just can I, I I might be able to sort of with that. So, it, when we um, our ZBA um, at town, when we are doing our own project review, sometimes we'll require that the that do what's called a peer review. In other words, the developer provided this traffic study. Okay, and then. You know, it's, and sometimes, and, and, and they're done cor and, and they're done correctly. But a lot of times, the ZBA can require, and I know in Reading we do do that. We do it with design, we do it with traffic. That it's a peer review. Basically, it's a third party paid for by the developer to have them review that, and then they can make recommendations to say, that say, you know what, we looked at the traffic study, and we think that it's inadequate. We think you should study the Hopkins intersection more. We think you should study that more, and they and they, and they make recommendations. As far as I understand, because I was at the first meeting, I, I saw many of you there, I heard the Wakefield ZBA say that they were not going to do a peer review. One of the things I think that, Bob, that we may be able to sort of put in our, is the request to do that peer review to really sure. more adequately look at this traffic study. Um, again, we can't make them do it. But we can yeah, request yeah. that. Very, I'd like, I, I, want, I, I want to give everyone a chance to speak up and, one, and, one last and say that. Do we sure. have more letters for you? You mentioned. Oh, okay. Uh, for, I've got another 22, and I'm not sure how many uh, Summit I uh, have. So Thank we're you. getting close to 100. And finally, I'm going to ask, are we agreed to butters? Uh, the town of Reading is on the butters list. It's uh -huh. having three. Uh, parcels that are abutted, so I'm hoping that elevates our status. It's probably water. <laughs> well, I, I mean, I think if you look at, look at the thing, we've got open land and we've got two other parcels, but by we, I mean the town. I didn't right? happen to look for that. Can I make a comment? I just think the underlying problem is the density. Yeah. You've got a smaller yeah. parcel of land than what Wakefield Vista is on. And they're only going to utilize 30% of that smaller parcel for the three buildings with the underground garage, as we understand it, is going to feed right out onto Hopkins Street. Yeah, of course. So it just seems like it's the number of units that's the sandline problem, yeah, the density overall. And so it's often the, the, the rub. Um, I'm going to move on. Yes. I'm Donna Brio from One Summit Drive, soon to be, I think, probably the <laughs> ghetto. Um, I think one of the areas that, um, on your map, that should be re-looked re at is um, where Hopkins Street comes into um, South Street. It's right there at the bridge, and right now it's, it's close to beyond disaster because the traffic lights are not working properly. People see the red light, it's a long red light, and they're going through the red light. There's gonna be a, a disaster there. So it's right there at... Um, right here. The bridge. Oh, we're all, we, yeah, at the bridge. At, yeah, the right temporary right, lights on each yeah, end of the bridge. Where the lights are now. Yeah. But when they were putting up... Um, so are you saying the, that you can make right here? It, no. so yes, yeah, yeah. So they come off, and it, it's right here. It's it's backing up. I go to nine o'clock mass at St. Joe's. It usually oh. takes me seven minutes. The last few days, it's been twenty minutes because it's been so bad. But one of the other things, Mr. Hallis, said that you brought up was the construction vehicles. They're they're huge. My car was totaled when they were putting up the uh, the Vista uh, by one that just bent my car almost in two. Um, they cannot make that big turn from South Street on, the, from Hawkins Street on to South Street. Some of those vehicles are way too big. So they get off of Main Street and they come down Hopkins Street, which is putting more traffic on it, where they're coming up Hopkins Street over the bridge. And <coughs> so that turn right there onto South, onto South Street um, is too sharp for them, and um, 
They hit the pole a few times. It's probably it got because stuck. of the placement of that telephone pole in that corner. It makes that corner very yeah. difficult. You can see the pole already has a lot of marks on it where it's got to be. And that's where it's all is roughly. Um, yeah, well, okay. It would be right, uh, right here would be the pole. Okay. And um, so as they were coming down, they couldn't, they couldn't quite make it. They were getting hung up on it. And um, even though they have maybe a straight cross from Tarrant Lane, um, it, it's a tight squeeze for those huge trucks, you know, they're Yeah, that's a really good point. Huge yeah. hundred is, wheelers or whatever. <laughs> no, Vin, I'm going to ask, Vanessa wanted to ask you a question. Bob, can we, as, as far as the construction vehicles that are driving on Reading Roads during the construction proc or pros, uh, stage, can we control their flow? No. Um, unless there is an unsafe turn. <laughs> Bob, excuse me, on, on Hopkins is a yes. home for special needs. And you can go there seven days a week and there's always two or three cars back on Hopkins. Because they have no place to back. Because I have turned two way to a one way. Right. Yeah. 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 Seven eight to like six eight. Enforcement. Uh, yes. Yeah. 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 Okay, thank you. There's no sidewalks, it's kids getting picked up. Yep. It's going to be great. Bob, is that something you can ask? Uh, I can ask. Deputy Chief Clark, Bob. <laughs> Certainly there's during construction and then there's after construction to consider, and I can't answer which uh, is better. Okay. Um, I'm sorry, uh, Bill Brown raised his hand and somebody in the back. Did this lady get a chance to finish? Oh, did you? I'm sorry, you sat down, so I didn't <laughs> but, but, um, well, right. yeah, uh, Okay. One of the things we have no, Reading has no legal standing, but um, I hate to think that, gee, my, my taxes doubled uh, and you have no legal standing, so if I should get... <coughs> hurt or property damage, whatever right there, you're going to say, oh, tough luck. She's in, she's in Wakefield now. Um, so I would hope that you would consider, seriously consider, the number of, of Reading citizens that are using this that are, are it, it could be hurt. Because you know, even though you don't have the legal standing, I think now is the time to put your foot down and say, wait a minute, our citizens are, are important to us. Thank you. We, we, the board will respond to a lot of this, but I wanted to make sure everyone had a chance uh, to, to speak, although being, of course, cognizant of time. Thank you, Bill. Kim. In the uh, top of the story, uh, Gazebo Circle was the former Nike site, and it was developed under a PRDM, remember it? Land Residential Development Municipal. And they put in more houses than normal because of the same age. At the time that that was developed, uh, the developer of the thing was supposedly going to put us in sidewalks. He never did. So don't uh, leave too much on the promise that they uh, are going to do it. Uh, at one time, when the Nike site and those phones were connected, there was a line, a water line from the Nike site down there. So, okay. Yeah. Thanks. So this experiment, uh, South Reading uh, succeeded from us in 1812. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't over the wall. It wasn't over the wall. Um, yes. I accept Sarah to 82 South Street, so I live on the other stretch of South Street between uh, Main and West. Uh -huh. And I wanted to comment also on the sufficiency of the traffic study and concerns. It doesn't look like, from what I read, they conducted any part of any study on the other stretch of South Street. Yeah. So to make the right. assumption that people are going to get on 95 is a big assumption. Yeah. So the traffic is very heavy. A lot of people cut through to avoid the 95, 93 intersection. <laughs> and construction and commercial vehicles already do that. And to come out the other end. To come out uh, on the west. The, that stretch yeah. between 93 yeah. and 5. So during an hour in the morning, an hour in the evening, you know, there's people coming through. You know, we're commuting for work, but a lot of commercial vehicles already yeah. do it as well. Yeah. They plug in their GPS. So if there's a really big backup at the intersection, you can tell traffic. Yeah, because we see more cars going by on, on South, South Street. Yeah. So I would say I would like to urge that we do our own traffic study at least on that part of South. Um, yeah. 
and then take it as an opportunity to mitigate impact to the neighborhoods back in there. Yep. Um, parts of the south are barely two car widths wide, particularly in front of my house, which Mary Ann can attest to, because her son delivers papers across the street from me. And during, in the evenings when it's dark out around four o'clock, I've almost just going to my own home, almost got my side view mirrors, you know, swiped off by people coming for it. So people are both the speed limit yes. 30 miles per hour, is barely two car widths wide, then you have commercial vehicles, construction vehicles coming through. Um, so I would encourage us to look at things to do, like lowering speed limit, putting in more stop signs, you know, at putting limits on access during certain hours as well. Yep. So, Thank you. Thank yeah, you. I mean, and, and, and that side of South Street is pretty heavily. I just yeah. ask a question. Why do they um, for the traffic that continues on to um, South Street, is it more morning or afternoon it's rush both. hour? Both. It's both. Okay. So, so I think um, you know, it's not on Cotto traffic, and I can get into town as well. But okay. I, uh, I kind of cut through people's neighborhoods because it annoys me when people cut through mine. <laughs> you see plates from New Hampshire on you know, South Street and Reading. But more and more, when traffic is heavy, you see more and more commercial vehicles. Okay. Um, there used to be a commercial vehicle exclusion on South, but that sign has been taken down uh, in the last year, I would say. So you'll see big trucks who are coming from Uber yeah. and back in the industrial parks coming coming through. Um, Thank you. That's only we can Marianne? Marianne Downing, 13 Heather Drive. And I Heather Drive is I live you know, only a couple of blocks from her. So she already said what I was going to say about traffic, but I wanted to get back to the fundamentals on standing. And I want to know, um, Bob, did the town ever talk to or consider what happened? with Forest Park on the Winchester Stoneham line. Are you familiar with that no. situation? So that was planners may be, but I'm not. So that was a situation where Winchester was going to put in a 40B literally on the yeah. border of Stoneham. And the sole means of egress yeah. ingress into this complex was on Stoneham Road, which appears to be very similar, especially in this project, to the four new proposed driveways. So Stoneham, on September 14, 2016, sent a letter, and I have a copy, and I, I can send you a copy, it's on their website, to Mass Housing, having um, various complaints about why they wanted Mass Housing to deny eligibility of the project. And one of their key points was, I'll just read, the proposed project is totally reliant upon land in Stoneham, ingress and egress, yet the application includes no below market rate dwelling units in Stoneham. Um, you know, access to and from the locust relies on land in Stoneham. In addition, and they, and they point out, and this appears to be true for us too, the Stoneham zoning bylaw prohibits all multifamily structures and uses, precisely what is being proposed here, within the relevant zoning district. So the point was, and, and I have, I'm, I was trying to look and zoom in before I came here on our zoning, but it looks like everything on the other side of Hopkins and on the other side of South also is single family zone. So yeah. I was yeah. pointing to to the west. Like of south of the so street. right. So the complex if you can slide the map over, I'm sorry. Sure. So everything if I'm trying to map here, all of this yes. is single family zone. But yet so they're proposing all these driveways that are gonna have to go through our single family zoned property to get to theirs. So Stone argument that I'll just continue on and I I sent this informally to Andy. I'll send it to you, Bob. Okay. They said, um, the law governing this situation is well settled. The land in Stoneham cannot be used for access to a use in Winchester that is prohibited within the Stoneham land. See Town of Brookline, D.C., right? And they cite some case law. So, such a, you know, they say you could overcome this by putting some below market rate units in Stoneham. In other words, giving Stoneham some of the benefit of 40 B. So as a follow-up, this was filed in September 2016, and um, according to Wicked Local Winchester from November 21st, 2016, Forest Ridge application put on hold. To my knowledge, in the two years or so, it has not been put back on. So I would just respectfully submit, can we ask um, Ray Niara, is there anyone to look again at what Stoneham did to see yeah, if we have some well. standing? Not necessarily to block it, but to say we have rights and we we need to have our traffic concerns addressed, our water pressure. I, you know, we're not trying to have a bad relationship with Wakefield and stop their project, but they're relying. Even the traffic report itself 
80% of the turns are going to be onto Reading Roads. Yeah. So I think we have an analogous situation. Thank you. Mary, that was very, very helpful. Thank yeah, you. thanks. Thanks for doing that. That's okay. Okay. Um, anyone else? Yes. Anthony, the yeah, east of that seven is equal circle. I know Bob mentioned earlier that there's a potential way out of it or easing the traffic situation by going down Hopkins. But that's a left. You can't take the left from Hopkins to Main Street. So a lot of people go that way in the morning. They go to 128. They have to make that left. But once the traffic, traffic once the intersection is signalized, the left hand turn okay. will be allowed. Okay, that's what I want to add. Yep. Right. Yeah, there'll be full turns from every direction. We check okay. that out. That's what's proposed. Okay. Thank you. I'd like to um, switch the meeting now over to uh, allow board discussion. Um, thank you very much for all of your input. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure it has given Bob and ourselves a lot to think and talk about. So, so now I'll turn it over to the board for thoughts of the message. I want to hear from Ray on Mary Ann's yeah. proposal. Yeah, I um, I used to have breakfast with those two communities, and they've both retired, so I can't ask them from 2016. Mm -hmm. I do remember them discussing it somewhat heatedly on this corner of the breakfast table, yeah. um, and I, I think the issue was actually very complex. And I do think it was 100% to 0% in terms of being one-sided, where one community was getting the full benefit and the other community was bearing, if you will, the full cost, as opposed to like portions that. thereof. <laughs> so certainly we can look at that as a model. Yeah. Um, what I took down as notes take action on just for the board's consideration is um, require a peer review st st uh, for traffic study, as Barry suggested. And water okay. supply. Yeah. Uh, construction mitigation, that's a broad topic. There's different safety-related issues. Um, ideally, it would be nice if they just didn't go into Reading at all, but practically, I don't think that's going to happen. It's also the blasting issue, if I remember correctly. Yeah, someone had mentioned that. Well, they're doing blasting. I had yeah. a that. lot of ledge. That's, why the, pro that's yeah. why the project is designed the way it is, with Away all of the houses, right, all the, this way, because it, the, okay. it's all the ledge. Okay. So. Does, does the town of Reading do anything question that blasting how often it's all ledge how much blasting that's will that's well regulated before, before yeah. we all kind of swoop yeah. down onto the yeah, yeah. 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 Um, traffic that will continue west um, you know really to any part of town but particularly uh, south street um, certainly the stone and winchester example um, those are the major points i hit there's lots of subtopics mm -hmm. in there well, there's some of the road um, mitigation issues I think are brought up. Yeah, you know, different sidewalks, different signage, um, other roadway improvements. And, and again, just, just for the community's benefit, right now we want to have Wake, ask Wakefield to fix everything and pay for everything. In two years, there may be things they didn't fix and improve, and we'll have to deal with them. So just, just because Wakefield doesn't agree to do things doesn't mean the town's going to turn its back once the project is complete, and we understand what the impacts are. If there's a road that needs to be repaired uh, just because it's in poor condition and Wakefield didn't do it, we'll do it. So just to put that out there. Um, um, I'm, I'm going to try to just keep this within the board so we can um, make some Hey, I, I had a, a, uh, I picked up a, a couple of things. Um, I, I would like to hear from Ray on the the um, Stone and Winchester letter situation, yep. mass housing, um, and looking at maybe creating one ways during certain hours to address. Uh, the, the other thing I think that we could do, um, of course, it will have a cost, uh, but the, we could increase the police presence in that area uh, uh, as long as the deputy chief, you know, feels he has the, the officers. But right now, cars speed down those areas. Okay. Um, and and when if the police could have some presence there during construction times when the construction vehicles are trying to make these turns they're unsafe um, and also to 
And it just takes a couple times to see a police officer having pulled over somebody, and then traffic slows down uh, for a bit. Yeah, so, just to comment on that, um, yeah. during other construction projects, not necessarily in the recent past, but the library and, and high school come to mind, there's definitely increased police presence. Yeah. However, they can't go into Wakefield. I, I know. So, I, I know. That's tricky. Uh, I know. Um, but if they are cutting through towards yeah. uh, Main Street to get on, say, uh, 95. Uh, and sit right here with sunglasses. Yeah. Yeah. So th those are some thoughts that I had. Uh, others? So, so on the road mitigation, Bob, um, <coughs> it seems there's a couple of things. How, how s soon are they hopeful to start turning dirt over? We know. Did, did you get any well, I mean, wisdom I, on that? Yeah, I mean, I sounds like they're trying to move. They're trying to move. I would say they're moving very quickly. lightning speed. Yeah, they they mentioned that. I mean, think about our 40 Bs. How, I mean, just look at Lakeview and Eaton. It's well over a year, I think, since the, you know the first meeting right. came. Um, they, their, their ZBA chair, thought that they wanted to get this thing uh, permitted within five meetings. So they figured well, that once a month. Well, I mean, the fact that they are announcing no, they're right, no peer they're peer not peer. originally going to call for a peer review. Right, it yeah. tells you right away yeah. that they got this, they got this sled on the rails, and they want to get it going. Right. Now, I think that for purposes of our town, there are some things that. Would, would benefit all parties really, and particularly the people that live there, um, to slow this down a little bit. So for example, I mean, the idea of getting started on this thing before that bridge is done is right. unthinkable to me. I don't think they'll do that. I mean, I, I've been down, I've made it a point in the last couple of weeks to cross that bridge at different times of the day. Um, and it's, I won't say it's equally awful. It's awful at all times, but it's worse at other times. Yeah, uh, I've been across it probably four or five times at morning, afternoon, and then kind of in the middle of the day. Um, because it's kind of a, you know, unless you live there, it's little right. known that, I mean, right. you spit and there's white food, you know? I mean, right. everything is right, is very close together. That bridge has got to be a mitigating thing to the time span. I mean, that's something we've got to ask for. <coughs> the second thing is, and I really feel pretty strongly about this, and I think we'd have good reason to make the case, I think they should signal Hopkins before they start the project. I, I'm convinced that the construction traffic will actually be worse than the resident traffic. I mean, not that any of it's going to be good, mm -hmm. but you're talking about outsized vehicles you're talking about people who don't live there they work there they might work there for a week they might work there for six months they might work there for a day so their thoughtfulness to the way that they transverse the the highways and the byways is is not going to be good i really think we should work hard and press hard i'm assuming the builder has to pay for the, the state has to oversee the lights on Main Street because it's Route 28? Correct. And somebody else has got to pay for it? Uh, the state. We have... Well, it's not going to be us. It has nothing to do with this project. Um, it's just... Uh, I think we have a small amount of money saved up for this that was mitigation money from another project, <laughs> not, not our money. So, are you, are you telling me then that this light at Hopkins has nothing to do with this project? Correct. Yeah. That's unthinkable, almost. Well, it was designed seven or eight years ago, well before this project was conceived. To, to actually, to J John, that's John, a really good finished? point about yes. about the um, the construction traffic. One of the things, Bobby, I want to uh, maybe this goes in the letter is you know when when the ZBA approves a a project, they just don't say okay, projects approved. They go and they have like a, an order of conditions. There right, are things correct. that they have to do there. Perhaps one of the order of conditions can be that construction vehicles bypass Reading. You know, maybe they give them a map that they have to get off, that they have to go through Wakefield and not Reading. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and so this way at least um, <coughs> that, and, 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 and that's one of the things too, so if it's in the order of conditions and then we find out, you know, it turns out that they're violating, 
then you can, you know, the ZBA, whoever monitors things in Whitfield, you know, you have a case to go because you're violating an order of conditions. So, you know, that potentially, and again, I don't know, I don't know the, get them to do that. I don't know the streets well enough in Wakefield to suggest an alternate path, but there's not a good path. There's, but there's, but yeah, it's there for me. Right. But request, I mean, it could be put in there as a request. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we can certainly request that. I, I think. It's um, a busy road now. Data is not busy now. Okay. Okay. Um, Dan, did you have any thoughts on this? Uh, I'm pretty much in agreement with all the points Bob raised. Uh, yeah. I'm not thinking of anything new. You guys have covered my thoughts. Yeah, definitely. Always should be at the letter. Uh, have you have, have you seen anything like this? I, I mean, the project essentially looks <coughs> ready. Well, when, when you know for, for all the roads and even if yeah. unless you knew that there was this little. Um, I thought that came from the past, Bob. I don't know if you remember back the the MEPA process where the state uh, oh, yeah. does some oversight of commercial, large commercial developments that tend to impact neighboring towns. Now I realize it's 40B and not commercial, right. but the, 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 some of the precepts of MEPA apply where they would get involved in assessing the common 40B now. It, w it would not apply. Yeah. No. I mean Wakefield ZBA could choose to do that. Yeah, they're not required to certainly. Okay. Anyone, Vanessa? No, John, you good? Um, oh, um, yes. And just, I mean, I know what the, the purpose of tonight's meeting is to kind of prepare something to go to, to Wakefield for this project, but there were a number of the things that came up that we should maybe be addressing on our own. I was really, never really thought much about what happens when you go down somewhere uh, past Main Street to get on, um, you go down where it hits west. I mean, I can conceive that that could be a huge cut through for people who want to go north on 93. So you avoid that whole intersection, you go down um, and then get on you know, the highway that way, one exit, or you want to continue south on 128. I would imagine there'd be a lot of that. So anything about whether or not we change the, tra you know, change. Uh, the speed limit, or um, you know, access to certain times of the day, the things like that. That maybe we, the things that were brought up here that we can control, unrelated to this project. So, I'm sorry, Bob. Um, you know, if you recall the development of the old Addison Wesley, that's why the street changed. You know, whether it's had its desired impact, of course, no one really knows. But the idea was to change South South Street somewhere from a straight shot right here to a more difficult turn now. Has that really discouraged traffic? No. It, does, it doesn't discourage me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, that was a topic several years ago. Um, you know, if you don't live there, it's really hard to know the impact, honestly. You know, right. Police have studies, they put speed boards out, they get calls, but again, only the neighbors and the abutters really understand what it's like day to day. The only egress I can see um, other than Reading is if they go over um, They're gonna to Prospect North, North and through Bear Hill uh, Golf Club. So down Hopkins? Uh, yeah. yeah, that's right. a bad and turn. Then yeah, then Stoneham will yell out. Yeah, and then all the neighbors in Stoneham yeah. and Wakefield yeah. say, hey, not through our neighborhood. <laughs> the problem is there are there, there don't seem to be any really uh, any real neighbor Wakefield neighborhood right. adjacent to this thing. So I don't think there's going to be a hue and a cry from Wakefield. But we will do the, the best we can. And Bob will put something in the letter. We have a number of things to follow up. So. Thank you all for coming. Yeah, the things discussed, I'm most concerned about construction mitigation and the size of vehicles. Mm -hmm. You know, they're going to be disruptive, but yeah. there are some turns that look just very logistically difficult to make. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, People that come to make those turns won't know they can't make them until exactly. they can't make them. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the problem. It's like the bridge is right. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll allow uh, just a couple more quick public comments, and then we need to get o over to some other business. Uh, I'm sorry, my name is Kathy Hoodland. I'm at 509 Gazebo Circle. Uh -huh. A couple of things. Number one, South Street's um, yes. potholes are notorious, and I would see heavy okay. construction on top of everything else, only making yeah. the, the yeah. street quality today before they even make the improvements 
that much worse. Yeah. Um, another thing on Hopkins is because we have so much through traffic into Wakefield these days, when people are parked on the side of the road, I have to stop, let the cars go the other way, which makes oh. the people behind me very angry because they want to speed. Yeah. So can we at least say no parking on the sides of the roads? Something like that. Bob, Bob will look into that. Um, yeah, there's a there's a man yeah. in the back. Okay. Um, straight, straight. Did you want to say you had your hand up for a while? Um, my name is Anthony Von Corso. I am the developer of the project. Uh -huh. I came here because I wanted to listen to everybody's concerns. Some things that I, I think it's only to be able to take in everything that you say with the things that we can address and try to address it. There were a few things that were mentioned that I have a complete disagreement that somehow we build on this fast track to something that's absolutely not the case. They have a complete. Uh, process that they go through and they analyze everything step by step by step it's meeting by meeting every issue that we have my whole the entire team spends a tremendous amount of time and effort to address regardless if this project never occurred you have some structural and fundamental issues with your traffic regardless of what we do as you mentioned yep. we have uh, traffic light issues roadway issues sidewalk issues the problem with a lot of our communities now there's no incentive to go out and walk because they're on sidewalks but they should so all the developments that I do now, like years ago, they didn't require sidewalks to. So we are proposing a sidewalk where my property is, and we are going to continue to have uh, the, the length of my, my, my land. We're going to have sidewalks there. If you guys eventually tie into it, that would be a positive thing to So uh, again, I hear what you're saying. I'm here to listen. What we can absorb and, and help correct or address, that's the purpose of my, my presence. But I listening to somehow that the way you feel is just fast driving, it is completely wrong. So uh, they are very, very thorough what they're doing. They're requiring us to, to address everything in, uh, in a very, very orderly uh, and professional, professional manner. So I, he I hear you on the fast track, and you di disagree with that. But um, what are some of your thoughts on the uh, and, and on the other concerns that have been expressed here tonight? Well, this, I mean, yeah, this a valid point about uh, you know certain hours of the day on South Street. I can see how that could be a problem again, regardless of my project. Things like that during rush hour, maybe they should be addressed. Yeah, the speeding issue. You can see that the widening roads that it should be again, regardless of my project. That's something that should be done anyway. The town should take that into consideration. Yeah. The other light that you're you're talking about. Uh, implementing at some point that's all going to help the entire the community people want to come to this community because of all the wonderful things that, that, that the, the, the the residents have done and the boards have done to make it a thriving community that's one of the reasons why i i, I invest here it's, it's a fabulous place great people great school systems everything about it is positive so um it's going to continue to grow I, I, years ago there was one car per household yeah i got four kids Cars, you know, regardless of adding and getting in additional homes. It's just, unfortunately, our culture, the way that we design everything is financial district over there, shopping district over there, residential district over there, and all we do is get in the car and drive everything. Yeah. And all the new projects that you start seeing going to different parts of the country are designing mixed use complexes yeah, where you can have work, live environments that I think long term communities should start thinking about that. Because that alleviates a lot of these problems too. But that, get this up, this is not one of them. I get that. But yeah. Yeah. And, and and you do you have to admit this is gonna have in addition to the the, 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 the problems that Red has with its road road South Street, Hopkins Street, that this the the number of units you're proposing will have a big impact. Where is one house? It doesn't matter, it has an impact. Okay, so well, well, to, yeah, yeah. To, All right. Okay. okay. To be fair uh, about traffic, if there's a development that's in, in Reading and the truck the trucks are coming through Wayfield, that's the same situation as you restricting traffic flow to go, you know, into Reading. It's construction, it's going to happen everywhere. Right. Whether it's a driveway, a house or something. So to Th limit that thank you. It's a short term thing. We want thank, to get in, thank build you. it, and settle. Thank you. I thank you everybody for um, listening. Thank you. Yes, and last very very quick. Great. Two questions before the break. Uh, one, have, have, please has identify Randy yourself. Into oh yeah. Please, please oh, identify yourself. John Stenbeck, uh, 65 Avalon Road. Ready. Has Ready looked into uh, purchasing the property? Has put a single family houses there? We don't own it. Yeah. I know. But he already did the purchase. It's not. It's not a yeah. property. Right. Uh, and secondly, Bear Hill is a 
very big golf course there. I mean, yeah. I'm nervous, but I played it. <laughs> so, but uh, that would look, looks like a nice par three over there where that project is. Is there any kind of a deal that you can <laughs> strike with uh, the golf course? And, uh, well, yeah, uh, right alongside there is totally open. Yeah, I, I thank you. I'm not sure Ryan's in the position to outbid. Um, Just trying to get it, Mr. Yeah, thanks. Okay, so um, with that, we will move on to our next agenda item. Thank you. Thanks, oh, thanks, thanks very all much. for yeah. coming. Thank you. Um, we give the room a minute to. to yeah, yeah, we give the room a minute. You know, it's funny you say that because some of our employees um, that live over on this side of Wakefield, the GPS is telling them to go that way. I saw that.
Yes. All right. Um, let's get back to it. Um, next up is. <laughs> uh, yeah. What do you mean? We only have four The main players are right up front. This is where the money is. Yeah. Um, this is a discussion on RMLD's proposed payment to the town uh, that you came up with it in your last meeting. I was there. Um, I think it's in everybody's best interest for these two elected boards to, you know, collaborate with one another, uh, work in good faith. Um, we both report to residents of Reading, although you've reminded me that you report to great payers in other towns as well. So anyway, <coughs> that's how I, uh, and my hope is that this board can vote on a uh, proposal that's been drafted up um, uh, for, for you. Uh, yes, and, and I'm going to hand it over to to, to Dave. Does it, well, I'd board like to call himself to order. Yeah, that's just what I was saying. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So uh, this is calling the yeah. Reading Municipal Light Board to order. So uh, all five members here: Mr. Pacino, Mr. Talbot, Mr. O'Rourke, Mr. Hennessy, and Mr. Stumpbeck. Thank you for coming tonight. Thank you. Very uh, much. Let me give a little summary of uh, what brought us to tonight. Um, in uh, one of the town meetings in 2016, a structural motion was passed to uh, study the payments to the town of Reading by the RMLD with the hope of getting a more defined uh, process year over year. Uh, that subcommittee met a couple of times, uh, most recently on October 25th uh, of, of uh, 2018. Uh, just prior to that uh, meeting, uh, the general manager had done a very extensive study on uh, the, uh, the, uh, the future challenges facing the RMLD. RMLD strategic study, it's in your packet tonight, the financial convergence of the operating income with the town of Reading Pilot due to the loss of kilowatt sales. Effectively, the RMLD is being confronted with uh, uh, many capital uh, rebuilding needs. At the same time, they're seeing a drop in kilowatt hours, uh, the actual kilowatt hours being sold in the four cities and town, four towns. Uh, so that, that could have a, a concomitant negative effect potentially on what they're able to afford to give the town of Reading. So the general manager did in that report propose a couple of uh, alternative models uh, based on the decline in kilowatt hours or possibly uh, some metrics off of the net plant combined with income. Uh, yeah, on the 25th, uh, the uh, subcommittee met, that's the subcommittee that was formed uh, with two CAB members, two RMLD members, and myself representing the town of Reading. Uh, we had all looked at that study, uh, it kind of just hit the presses and we didn't have a lot of discussion about it that night. Uh, however, uh, the following month, the uh, Board of Commissioners met. Uh, Mr. Pacino made a motion uh, in the spirit of moving uh, things along. Uh, uh, I'll read that briefly here just to get it on record. Uh, move that the RMLD Board of Commissioners adopt a resolution to propose to the Subcommittee on Payments to the Town of Reading that the RMLD make a constant below the line payment to the Town of Reading for two years, 2019 and 2020, at the existing payment level for 2018 of $2.48 million. Payment may be subject to any emergency issues such as severe weather damage or other catastrophic events faced by the RMLD. Payments are to be effective for periods after July 2nd, 2019. In addition, move to commission an independent consultant in 2019 to review the RMLD strategic study of May 2018 prepared by the RMLD GM and to propose a transition plan for the year 2021 that provides an algorithm for calculating the below the line payment to the town of Reading that is based on kilowatt hour sales, which is actual energy usage or some other applicable formula. So I thought that was a great step forward that was adopted 5-0 yeah. by the Board of Commissioners. Uh, so two major theses here, uh, freeze the payments for two years yep. and then commission a study of GM's report evaluating her conclusions to see if uh, others, other payment models might uh, appear. So, so that brought us to, a, uh, our town council has been kind of putting together the pieces of history behind all the agreements uh, yes. painstakingly. <laughs> and uh, we, uh, Vanessa and myself, Bob, uh, to the assistant town managers met with town council in a staff meeting on December 31st. Uh, we went through the whole history. You know, is it voluntary, is it not voluntary? Uh, 
what are the different votes of the different bodies, what does the 20-year agreement stipulate, and it's all kind of come together for us. Mm -hmm. uh, it, and Bob had a very strong recommendation that we go forward and uh, accept two-year freeze. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so Ray cast that into an agreement, uh, which has gone through a couple of iterations. Uh, the most recent of which I think was emailed out about five o'clock today. I yeah, think, no, uh, but it's printed here, yeah. correct? It's printed with some revision marks on yes, it. Bob's yeah, got the uh, clean version here. The version up here that's clean. Yes. And um, now Vanessa and I, we're, we're not a subcommittee, so we've been talking offline about this. Uh, we had some differences over the first version. Mm -hmm. In my opinion, and I haven't talked to her since. I think those have been addressed. The, the revisions. So we really only should be looking at the second version. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's the seven pager. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And what you are looking from the board this evening is a vote on the two-year payment. Right. This is an agreement that both boards would sign. I guess technically it should go back to the subcommittee. Just to. Yeah. But uh, if all parties are in agreement, I wouldn't see any reason why we couldn't proceed with. So this sets out the procedure for what happens in the two. This gives the two us, years right. and. Uh, and which is plenty of time to work. We do lay out the, uh, the these are the four payments we're talking about. Yeah, there is a little question about that in your meeting. Is that what you're intending? Yes. Okay. That was that was intended. Oh, I'm sorry. That was John. That was intended. So there was some um, confusion on dates. Yeah. What, all right. Yes, sir. So what we're really doing here is we're, yeah. we're freezing the payment that we've been getting. Well, we there's language in it that says the payment. This is the nominal number. It can go up or down depending on circumstances. What are those circumstances? It's stipulated in the following okay, paragraph. Well, can you cut to the chase? Yep. Good. You guys want to read that? You want me to read it? No, just tell me what it is. Uh, if, there, if the RMLD has a catastrophic yeah. problem with yeah, substation. Yeah, I can go the other way. I get it. If something bad happens. If, what if, if something good happens? If something good happens and, and revenue revenue sales and kill what hours are up, and they're in a position to increase us for those four quarters. So I guess where I'm driving at is this is a number that is mm -hmm. presupposed to go forward to buy some time, yes. come up with a better formula. Yes, I right. get that. How do we, how are we getting to this number? What is it a function of? Is it a function of kilowatt hours being sold now? It's a What's function it a of history. History. Yeah. This is the no 2018 no payment. Right. Yeah. Right. So the cost. So how did we get? Okay. So let's go back in history. How did we get right. there? We got there. Uh, it was. It's. It's stipulated actually in one of the whereas's here. <laughs> oh, the 20-year agreement. Why don't we go through this whole thing? Because it does kind of explain. Uh, yeah, I think. Uh, right here. Dan, I think so there's there's well, I read it. I, 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 I have read this. There is a historian here. I can explain <laughs> it if you'd like. <laughs> well, well, you want to recap the first film? Okay. Yeah. So basically, um, back in. And you'll see that actually we came up, and Dan has mentioned to me, there's a 1949 uh, formula. Mm -hmm. And actually, if you read those minutes early in the earlier in those set of minutes, my grandfather's name was. Yeah, yeah. That was a great year. <laughs> that, that could all wipe out by the 20 year agreement. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, that, yeah. That's, that's one interesting. Of the things, and, and this grew, grew out of some of the issues with the town of Wilmington. The town of Wilmington in the, in the late 80s uh, really took two votes to withdraw from the district. Yeah. Two town meeting, two town meeting votes, and you move on your stick. And basically, that kind of led to the 20-year agreement. One of the things that was a concern is the year before they took that vote, the commission voted to increase the payment to the town by half a million dollars. The outside towns were not too happy with that, mm -hmm. and so right. basically, what what we you know we hashed about the formula, and basically we came up with the number that was basically being given at the time and that we increase each year by CPI. And that's grown and grown and grown since 1988 right. to the level that you see up here, the, the, the uh, whatever that number is. Two and a half million dollars. Okay, so it's a CPI factor that's yep. Since 1990. From where it was to where it is. Yep. yep. Right. right. Okay. That's where it got to at this point. And we're talking about locking that off. Mm -hmm. yes. For two years. Okay, and is there, is there anything in that, any magic in that number that's connected to a, to a bottom line? No. No. And the, only thing, the only thing I would hope for is, you know, I know Barry talked about economic development earlier. Mm. Right. I, I can't stress how important that is to the RMLD, too. Yeah, right. I bet you couldn't sell to the 40 B and Wakefield. <laughs> <laughs> the same thing. Well, I don't know. You've mentioned some <laughs> poll that's a problem. Yeah. I don't like, know where that poll is. That's Maybe we'll find out where that is. Right. Maybe they see what well, I know that that, you know, that has been, factor. you know, when Andrew was here. Right. I mean, that when we helped him build his 
sales presentation about Reading mm -hmm. and you know some of the things we've yeah. talked about is that we'd love to find a huge user of electricity that right. needs sort of space right. you know at the intersection of you know 95 and 93 yeah. everybody wins in that deal. I agree and I mean everybody the, 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 the user wins you know RMLD wins the town wins everybody wins so I kind of get I mean I get that completely um, the, when we go forward I mean we're talking about freezing a payment right now that is kind of tied to Nothing specific. Right. Is it fair to say that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And I, and I don't mean that in a flippant way at all. I mean, I, I get how we got here. And I, and I value the fact that you've got that historic perspective. Um, so I'm assuming that during this two-year period that we have a predictable amount of money coming in unless some catastrophic thing happens. I get it. And you guys know exactly what you have to plan for from a budgetary standpoint. Again, unless something catastrophic happens. I get the wisdom in having a couple of years to do that. I just want to say out loud that during this time, we have got to tie this to something that is not magical. Well, that's what I think. What's in, even in here? It's just, you know, talk of, talks about kind of a formula uh, dealing with kilowatt hours or something else, and that something else can be any one of a number of things. Increased well, number of so users. Kilowatt hours is part of it, but part of it is how you know what's your up. So you have, you have a revenue stream, and then you've got you know then you get down to the bottom line. John, I'm going uh, to time this out here for a second. So one of the things that a, Dan and I talked about with Bob and Ray was that this is a two-stage, two-step process. So the first step is agreeing to freezing the payment for the two years. Yeah. Um, and then the second stage, which comes next, is the broader discussion of the formula. So Dan and I have already agreed to sit down to start that, what amounts to a brainstorming session, to determine the various options. And so I, I agree with you. I think that's really important. I think the economic development portion is something that we are all interested in. Uh, for the sake of expediency, since this is seven pages long, perhaps we can focus on getting the agreement portion done this evening, and then we can tackle. That's fine. I just think that there are people watching that need to be, they need to understand yep. how we're collaboratively yep. getting yeah. both to a place for now yep. and yeah. where we're headed with it. So I, I agree with you, and you know the idea of taking it step by step is I know something we have to painstakingly do. But I think for purposes of those people who are still up and watching and wondering, if, what does this matter to my electric bill? I really don't think it does. I mean, and they need to know that. Yeah. So I just think yeah. that it's important to have this little executive summary that we've gotten from Dan and from Phil. And it's like, okay, here's a number. Don't worry if you're a rate payer. You know, there's going to be a formula that's going to be responsive to protecting the rate payer. Yeah. You know, no matter where you are, if you're in Reading or if you're in Wilmington or wherever you are. So I just think it's important that we say that out loud to people. Yes. And then I'll be quiet and let you plow through this thing. I have a question. I, I just wanted to add, um, there was a question about, uh, John, just to go back to your concern about, okay, uh, what if they have some uh, catastrophic events and they can't pay us as much? But it, it is interesting, conversely, RMLD may experience higher than predicted revenues, such that the RMLD deems it appropriate to increase one or more of our, our installments. And we will, of course, be looking forward to that. <laughs> um, so, so it does, it, it's, I view it as a pretty fair agreement and a good way to um, have Vanessa and Dan work with your, your your subcommittee members to come up with a way forward down the road. But tonight, tonight, I really want to focus this in on the mo on uh, making a motion. We have a motion in here, right? Yeah. Um, Barry had a question well, first. And yeah. Yeah. I would just, just. I mean, I'm assuming we're going to pass this quickly um, in the spirit. Of, of the two organizations working together, but it, can someone just give me, Phil, Vanessa, you know, kind of what happens day one? What's the what's what's the process that's going to sort of st start that you know um, 
so that we ultimately get to something that's different and then hopefully permanent. Um, yeah. Can you just sure. quickly? Well, we have to go through the mechanics of uh, getting this approved by both boards and okay. through the, I guess the subcommittee would vote on the cap. Right. So, so I, I can. How do you see? Okay, that? Vanessa. I, what I would do if we do vote this tonight, I will actually instruct the department to schedule the subcommittee meeting as soon as possible. Yep. At this point, to move yep. to the next step, because there's a third party of this agreement. That's the CAB. Mm -hmm. uh, they haven't seen this at all right. at this point. Yeah. So. Uh, they would send a copy to them, and I'd call a meeting of, of the subcommittee to get this approved and then move it along. I'd like to have this done by April, by the April town meeting. Yeah, I mean, me, that's me, my goal. Me too, because this has been yeah. going on yeah. since. And of course, we would need to see the details. I'm sorry. Yes, we would need to see the details of this as well, because we really haven't seen. Of, of this course, about two, of, yeah. two of you have the, the version. Well, the almost. I got to make a couple technical changes because right. the wording's wrong in one section there. Uh, other than that, you've got yeah, we, yeah. So, yeah. To, to Barry's point, um, the process would be we approve with whatever amendments we desire. We send it to the commissioners and the cab. They approve it. Um, if they have suggested edits, it comes back to us. We'll do a little bit yeah. of back and forth. Like a conference committee or something. Right. Yeah. The next stage, which is what I had mentioned earlier, is uh, at this point we don't have a determined plan um, for intended, but however, intended next steps are Dan and I have agreed to get together um, to start the process of discussing what the different scenarios are for a possible formula. Yeah. Um, once we have that, we can either meet again with our board, we can meet with Ray, Bob. At, at that point, there's a broader discussion that needs to happen in, in a few different yeah. stages. So how, Dan and Vanessa, uh, as far as April town meeting, we can at least be able to say we've taken step one. Yep. Yes. And, and, and Not um, to have the formula done, but to have right. the, ba the, the right. agreement in, in, in place. Yeah. Yeah. So we can do that. Uh, I would add that uh, since the position I'm filling is not technically required to be filled by a select person, I would be willing in the short term to continue on in this capacity yes. beyond April 9th if I need to. That's wonderful. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. So, so motion. And I, second. Yeah. Well, I second. thank you. So uh, could you read, read, read the motion? Read the motion. So before I read the motion, we are referring to the second of the two versions. The seven pager. The seven yeah. pager. It has edits and track changes as opposed to the original version, which is the clean copy. So we're working off of the second version. It says later. It says later. It does. <laughs> yeah, and just so you know, the board knows behind me is the later version without bold and cross out. There's really no point in looking at the bold and cross out, yeah. which is the version I put in your packet. Okay. Right. Uh, so move that the select board approve the provisions of the agreement regarding distribution of earnings of RMLD to the town of Reading and execute that agreement uh, yeah. as presented. Probably you should say as amended. As amended uh, to the board. Second. All right. Uh, I have a couple of these are technicalities, so we shouldn't be too controversial. In the first paragraph, uh, you, we refer to the RMLB later so that should have its own definition like the RMLD did. So put a little paren after Board of Commissioners, the quote RMLB. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. just like right. in, parallel, in parallel to the line about it. Yeah. The word the. So, oh, gotcha. Well, I could do it. Okay. Oh, no, I got you. You don't need that. More importantly, okay, on the next page, top of page two, it's it starts where is the RMLD Board of Commissioners? Sub yeah, that's it. Actually, it wasn't the subcommittee. Uh, I think what this should read is whereas the RMLD Board of Commissioners is recommending to the subcommittee on the payment to the town meeting that the RMLD retain an independent consultant, because that recommendation actually came out of the Board of Commissioners, uh, to review the below the line payments as part of the contemplation set forth in the materials distributed, and that's what's in your packet. So in other words, as a that's the source material for what would. So are you suggesting to strike the word subcommittee on the payment to the Well, here's how it should read. Whereas the RMLD Board of Commissioner, plural, then strike subcommittee 
committee here, but you're going to put it back in a minute. Okay. Is recommending two of them and put the subcommittee back in. So just reverse the two. He's yeah. recommending to the subcommittee. Right. So on the payment to the town already. Resolution, not recommend. We doubt their resolution. I think we've got a word there because that matches the. Uh, the yeah, motion. that's what I read you. Uh, Instead of the word adopted, I would recommend you say adopted. What you say, adopted a resolution. Adopted a resolution, because that's there exactly. What that was what Phil's final language was. Yeah. Dan, correct me if I'm wrong, but after subcommittee board should be removed. Did you say resolution? No. Resolution. Adopted right. resolution. Let's make sure he's got it. So, yeah. Don't go fast. I'm slow. All right. Course. Commissioner. Has adopted a resolution. Yeah, has adopted a res resolution to the subcommittee. Take out the word board. Subcommittee on, pay on payment to the town of Reading. On payment to the town of Reading. At least all the town meeting is not staring at me at this point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just the hardcore. Okay. I only type with two fingers. That's the RMLD and independent consult to review the below the line payment. I put a comma at that point after the below the line payment. As part of the contemplation of step four. It's fine. Don't worry about it. We get rid of, the get rid of this comma. Be the comma the as. Yeah. 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 And the materials and the rest of it's fine. So that could that be a friendly? The move over and seconder and yes, yes. Agreed. Sure. I think that's all I have. Is it subcommittee on payments or payment? Is it payment or is it plural singular? I think it's a payment. Yeah, I think the town council was careful about that. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll check. You give us more Change than one. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. <laughs> Two half payments every night. <laughs> <Too bad. laughs> and uh, you might want to show uh, the commissioners the. Uh, the number two exceptions to freeze the uh, oh, yeah. new paragraph there that we have. Yep. Yeah. Conversely. Unforeseeable. Um, that's the one on the bottom we were referring to. Is this pretty much in sync with their um, resolution? Well, it's in sync with what I discussed with Phil, but okay. I want the full board. Uh, yeah, I won't say yeah. that. Is that objectionable in any way to? I, I think we just need to think about it. There's a lot to do. I mean, you, you, you can take this back, out. Right? Yeah. Yeah. General, yeah. so we'll write the flow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We're all here. All right, that's all I have. <laughs> Dave's right. dying so, a vote back. Uh, what? Dave's dying a vote back. <laughs> the, the motion has been read. Um, any discussion? Oh, I, is it, would someone like to second it? No, we were good. Right. Yeah. Very good. Thank What's you. our goal tonight? For this, to so pass this, to pass yes. just this. Now, will they be trying to do the same thing, or it sounds like John? He just interested. explained what they were going to do. If they're going to take it back and yeah. uh, view we it. Have to yeah. it, John. We just yeah. Have they, yeah. they may have some differences. And I saw it today. So it's well, that's us too. And we we could effectively. <laughs> Okay. John. We saw, and we saw two of them. John, it's like the House of the Senate Conference Committee. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, I, you know, I guess what I'm saying is yeah. if our goal is to vote on it or just you take a temperature and go, I mean, th this actually makes a lot of sense to me yeah. at this point. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and I would vote in favor of it. We want to get to a document both sides will sign. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. is that, do we do that with a vote tonight? We have to start Because it. Yeah. Yeah. what's going to happen is... Yeah. They're going to look at it and go, well, what about that? I mean, just like we're doing right now. Right. I mean, that's going to happen when they... But I'm sure, you know, when they really read it, they'll love it. <laughs> and, and, um, so, John, to answer your question, yes, there will be. So the goal for this evening is for us to vote on this, hopefully to approve. We're not expecting them to take action. Right. Yeah. They, they'll then uh, okay. schedule the CAB meeting right. or the subcommittee meeting, pardon, for them to approve if they have any edits it'll come back to us we'll do a little practice. i guess what i'm saying is i don't think this is a finished product uh, first okay. they, they, yes, um, yes the one point i would add is you know, we did vote 5-0 um to recommend this to yeah. your plan already so yeah. the payments yeah, yeah, we recommend yeah the, I get it. The, the so, essential yeah, I'm, I don't think the payments are going to change. I yeah, think, right, you know, right. the verbiage is going to be language. Right. Yeah. 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 Everybody likes to work Smith. Right. Yeah. That's going to happen. I think it would carry more weight if you actually had a vote. Okay. We will vote. 
So I'm not against it. I'm just yeah. trying They've to think about They've been beating them up to do that, and they did it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we can't help you do out doing us. Okay. All That's a question. Let's do it. <laughs> okay. All, right. All in favor? Vanessa, crazy. All right. Great, great job, All right. uh, Dan, Thanks, Vanessa. Yeah. Uh, thank you. And Bob, thank you guys, too. Thanks for staying. Looking forward to you guys. I want to thank Dan and Vanessa for their, their participation in the subcommittee. Second that. And thank you for coming over to the RMLD and sitting with us. Please come again. Right. Notice, how we don't, we don't, we notice how we don't put you up on stage. Yeah. yeah. We're actually, you know, with the head right. spotlight, you know, you start to sweat. You should get that for a reason. While you're here, sure, you should cover people. Okay. All right. All right. Everybody's got to go buy a Tesla. Everybody needs to go buy a Tesla. No. Mr. Chairman, just have one quick additional thought, if I may. We never are all together, so why not throw this out? There, that you know, I know I know a little bit about municipal life plants in the state of Massachusetts. A lot of them have different modes of collab collaboration where yeah. things get done between the municipality and the mm -hmm. utility. And I certainly would like to see going forward in the coming years that we work on ways to find ways for the two organizations to find efficiency to sure. find ways to work together. I mean, it, this process was fine, but it was also like, like at the end of the day, what did we really do? Yeah. We spent a lot of time, a lot of churn, a lot of motion over are we going to tweak the taxes, are we going to tweak the rates? I mean, so I think we can do other things to work together, and um, my hope is that we can do that in the future. For I, 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 I would have no objection to, to um, as long as the liaisons set up the groundwork for our, our two entities to meet once a year and suggest uh, innovative ways for um, you suggested me a couple of, uh, of things that could attract high-speed business, for example. Um, and, uh, Anyway, yeah, I, I would also uh, urge you folks to consider meeting with the FinCom uh, on occasion, maybe once a year. Yeah. Yeah. I think that was done in the past. Uh, yeah. The yeah. 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 I don't know. We, we, you know I've, I've asked about that getting a schedule sometime. I'd love to you remember what time of the year that was. It probably had to do with your financials. Whatever, whatever time they, you know, whatever they want to see us. My 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 not has always been we go every minute we want he invites us to go. Okay. <laughs> well, our third time the liaisons can usually the liaisons. Right? What? Usually it's yeah, Vin used to it. give an update. Well, yeah, I mean, but we, it we, wasn't you know. like highly technical audit related. It was just here's what we're doing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we we've got to move on to other business. Okay, thank, you. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you very much. Don't forget to jump in now to adjourn. Oh yeah. Board moves to adjourn. So they were 9 30, 10, 10 o'clock. So we are now it's now 9 10, I believe. Not too shabby. Uh, just now. Time time. Time. <laughs> okay. Um, let's get moving. I think the next topic, um, the subcommittee town manager evaluation and goal setting process. Um, Bob will show you a couple of documents after the meeting. Um, I emailed Barry to try to put in words what I what I couldn't really communicate verbally. Um, he liked it, but he he he, worked, he, he made it a little easier to read. So <laughs> the, with all the uh, lines and so that's this. So to start with, this is the version the board last saw at a meeting. Yeah. There were two friendly amendments um, proposed and accepted, shown in yellow, and there was a uh, friend, uh, there was an amendment proposed, not accepted as friendly, sh which was the date shown. So that's where the board last was. So I, I'd like to, uh, at, at this moment, uh, put that back up. Sure. No, not <laughs> that one. The board is uh, doing funny things here. So I, I think we can accept the friendly amend, amend, amendments as is. However, there is a, an amendment to the original motion that I th I'd like to resolve, um, if we can. Uh, it's uh, to, to push it from April 1st down to June 30th. Um, so uh, I think Vanessa made that motion. I did. And uh, somebody seconded it. Let's wrap up discussion, vote on that, and move on to the next uh, uh, proposed amendment. 
Any, any comments on June 30th? Yes. Yes. I, um, I think we're kicking the can down the road. I think that comes too painfully close to, we need to have that form done and be familiar with it well in advance of the end of the fiscal year, which is really when we're going to start using it. This says we're not even going to get the bull, get it to the recommendation stage mm -hmm. until it's time to use it. And we're going to find ourselves in the same place we've been now for the last couple of years, which yeah. is we don't end up getting this thing to Bob until mm -hmm. September, you know, so which is, which is not really to, acceptable. When do we do the evaluations, though? I forget. What August. We, August. August. So, John, to your Hope point, would you feel more comfortable if we change that to sort of split the difference split the difference. May 31st? Well, uh, you know, I do think, so let me just tell you, I do have an ulterior motive, and let me come out clean with it, okay? Okay. <laughs> um, and that is that I think Dan's input in this is really going to be important. Yes. And I, for, for a number of reasons. You know, from an objectivity standpoint, from an experience standpoint, from the fact that he has crafted some of these in the past, and on April 9th, he'll no longer be among us. He says right. second. second. I think it's like April 2nd, by the way. I was correct at the town so board, correct. So I, I, it's I, the second, not the ninth, because I, I saw it on the well, calendar. Although our meeting, our last meeting, is probably sometime in March. It, it might is. Where we right. would actually yeah, yeah, uh, vote into something. I'm starting to wonder if the, yeah, is that going to be a good fit for me? Well, I, 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 you know, as chair, I'm supposed to throw out uh, ideas for um, members of, of this committee, and Dan and I had both expressed an interest to be on the committee, um, and I'd like to see it through with Dan. Um, well, could you commit to do it by April 1st? So here's, if I may, um, I, I feel like yeah. Dan is is um, <laughs> the popular kid who's being pulled in different directions. Um, <laughs> so we have the RMLD discussion that he's coming, um, yes. as well as this, and I think and policies yeah. and oh. policies. So but we all have from. Yes, but Dan's the only one with an expiration date. So we all have an expiration date. I wrote that one. Expiration date. I like that. So so but but in all seriousness, you know, we're um you know, we, we wanna uh, personally the RMLD discussion to me is the one that Dan provides the most valuable valuable input for. Um, and I've already sort of quartered him into continuing on on that anyway. Um, but I see, I, I almost, I, and you know, Dan, I, I don't want to speak for you, but I almost feel we're, we're spreading Dan too thin. Um, and this is something that Dan can participate in for the next few months. And then Andy and a second person, or a third person technically, could continue it on after the election. Um, should it be completed in time, they can still strive for the April 1st as a proposal. Right. Um, so. Well, I think you beat the mule till he drops. That's yeah. The first thing. I, think, yeah. <laughs> okay. I mean, Craig, let him earn his money. I, mean, I wouldn't have said it exactly that way. Right. Right. Well, but you're a gentleman and I'm not. Uh, so yeah. It's okay. yeah. But um, Dan and well, I. If do, you're going to be the second one, then well, really it's up to you to say. You know, or make a, you know, to make as far as which date we're going to pick. Yeah, he's only here till April first or you, April. 2nd. You could make it the right. later date. I just would not be. Isn't it true that right. the RMLD yeah. he can continue to work on yeah. yes. yeah. in an advisory so, capacity? No, I, I, actually, he's a member of the subcommittee. Okay, so yeah. so that's kind of legit. That can go yeah. on yeah. Right. without his yeah. expiry date. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> the um, I do like that. Yeah, that's um, good. I like that too. I, Anyway, uh, look, sooner is better in my opinion, yep. and I understand that you know we've got a lot of things to do. This is a pretty important thing. We all so, kind of so can I can I can I just say so? Can we keep the April first date as kind of let's really kind of laser focus? It's really sure. I mean he's here. I mean he's going to be here. It's yeah. real to you, yeah. and if it has to go to April thirtieth or whatever because you need a, one more meeting. Yeah. But if we make it 
June 30th. He's now gone three months. Yeah. You know, now we've got another person in. Yeah. yeah. So if if you want it, you know, it's it's really your call. Can you do it? I, Can you do it? I, and I think Dan and I, the, we, uh, we met the other night to work on the policy change and work pretty, I I, I okay. think pretty fast and 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 pretty uh, efficiently. Um, at, at writing this stuff. So and let's and, and, and let's keep it at April first with like doing our very best right. effort. But like yeah. obviously we're not, you know, you're not going to get fined if it's not. The, but at least we we're focused on the deal. And here's we the other thing to remember. So let's say that it, you don't get it finished, all right? Yeah. And, and let's say you and you two are working on this. Yeah. Now there'll be a um, draft. Dan, you know. The, the election comes and goes and you know Dan retires from his seat and if it's going to take a little bit more time for you remember the board has to approve it no matter what you bring right, back right. anyway so at least it's you know, moving forward yeah I, that's what I think I think the faster we move it forward the better off we all are how right. responsive to, and understand what you're saying about spreading people too thin and, and all that stuff but I think let's just do best efforts. Yeah, and understand we might not get there. And, and you know, um, Bob, j just one second. And Dan, if yeah. you expired um, uh, on April first of all, <laughs> April, I know April Fool's Day. I'm not going to look that down. Looking at that, and we we could. Um, you were no longer on the board. Um, is there anything to stop him? From working with me to wrap it up. Well, Informal, he's, he's not informally legal under this motion, but he could certainly do it as a resident to help you. Right. Yeah, and, yeah, and we, we could talk to talk to the new board about that. Right. I, I would yeah. think we have a pretty advanced draft at that right. point. In no which case, then right. it's just easy just to finish it. Yeah. Right. 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 Yeah. Um, I say we vote. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Any more discussion? Yeah, I would just uh, oh, suggest oh, this, but there's, there's one more. But yes, right. We'll at least vote on the date, and then yeah. I oh, on the date. Yeah. Okay, I, I'm going to support April first. Okay, so all, all in favor. Uh, uh, so I'll make no, a motion no to accept. Vanessa's motion. You know. how, how about it's it's June thirtieth? That needs to get a vote. Can, right. can I can I take Just away my? Draw sure. your I withdraw my motion. Okay. The seconder can right. agree. Okay. And there you okay. go. So uh, take out June thirtieth. Oh, Thank you, Vanessa. You're, you're moving on. So do you want to go to Barry's version or your yes. version after Barry's version? No, his version after my version is just a cleaner version of my version. Yes. Yeah, so Can just you say that again? Yeah. Yeah. No. no. <laughs> uh, it's so. easier to explain. Just pull up Barry's version. Okay. This week was next week, last week. the most complicated motion in the history right. of Yeah, yeah. exactly. You All right, so make first let me get, get, get rid of this. Changes. Oh, okay. So let's go. Get rid of that. Can we just accept the changes? Can I, I get um, <laughs> Do you mind if Barry and I move over here by the screen so we can? Not at all. Read. If you want to take over this, by all means. Um, Let so me just um, compare to make sure. Okay. No, that's okay. not. That's yeah. not. Say, so save that and then accept. Uh, uh, I don't draw that motion so. and replace it. Yeah, you can substitute it. Yeah. I, okay. I move to substitute uh, this motion for the prior one. That's something you can do. Do it a second. Okay. Second. Second. Okay. You want to sit down? Right. Well, uh, I guess we. Uh, no, I just okay. want to, we should like, probably vote on that acceptance yeah. before we. Plan. Oh, okay. All <laughs> in favor of. Oh, wait, wait, wait. To make that the motion. Yeah, so there was a motion. Well, that is motion on the floor. The oh, you mean to, to substitute. substitute this? Well, shouldn't he vote and explain it to you first? <clears throat> Effectively, there's a motion on the floor. He is now proposing a few amendments to it. Oh, all right, yeah. he's got to do that first. So he's got to explain okay. them. That's Excellent. fine. Yeah, no so what, the reason you're going to see some uh, crossed out language here that you've never seen before is because I sent Barry some ideas and then Barry smoothed them out even more. So just ignore. Well, why don't we just accept, save those accept. and then accept the changes in a new copy and then we can read the okay. accepted change. So do you, would you like to vote on these one? This. This is the first. Just vote on the whole thing. Or vote on the whole thing. Just vote on the whole thing. So this says, this says here, here, including this, uh, it says, yeah. uh, it's stipulated in the Piper, who was um, born in town manager. It, and including it's hard this, to read when they're in the way, huh? Um, Andy, yeah. can, can I suggest that, so can I ask as a point of clarification, what is a motion on the table? So the motion on the table is to replace this. With the previous this this was the motion on right. the table. To withdraw that. 
to withdraw okay. the previous I, motion and replace it with this. No, with so, the right, next so this. that oh, motion okay. has been motion. changed the screen on. That that motion has been made and seconded. That's yes. effectively a big amendment. Great. Yeah. Uh, let's it's vote because amendment. I think we're probably all on the same page right. that this yeah. is fine. Okay. Does so, everybody want us to see? Read, read, read no, I mean I, we got the version, so. Yeah. Everybody. Okay. I, okay. I'm on board. Okay. So can we can we vote? Absolutely. Are people comfortable with this? Because I I, yeah. I liked it. Barry liked it. Great. Can you uh, zoom it up a little bigger? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, I can't see the color. The color. Uh, okay, that's good. Get the whole thing on. Okay. Basically, the disappear the room. The major yeah. changes in this is that it basically separates goals it, 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 it yeah. separates goal and setting and remediation yeah. it, it I think that's good. fine so that's the that's what's wrong with that. yeah. is this good yeah okay, okay. And and then, okay. Would, that's good this would go yeah. into the new subsection more than three three uh, okay uh, yeah it might ultimately get why don't we just say a new subsection because that could change that number um, how about the subsection title town manager goals? That, yeah, just Which lose just the number. The numbers? Yeah. Okay. Good idea. For as a, as an apropos. Yeah. yeah. Any objection? No. None. I I'll take that. I have Barry will take that. I'm not good. I'm good. Um, okay. I'm going to assume. There's no program. Yep. Yeah. Plan. So plan separate from the review itself will be developed. Is that your implication there? Um, Say that again, Dan. I mean, in the blue, uh, set form should allow members to highlight areas of need improvement if a majority of members agree. If, that's a new set. Yeah. If a majority agree that remedial actions require a separate plan, just right. define what that means. That would be, uh, so for instance, um, as it stands, the town manager is ready um, on the town manager, manager goals, which really only... Well, they're jointly um, developed goals. They're, they're jointly yeah. developed, but, but they're the overall goals, objectives, and policy set for the town. Uh, and that's how Section 133 defines the town manager's goals. Yeah. Yeah. Things are working fine now. In five years down the road, or ten years down the road, some board has a town manager that is not meeting the core competencies. Right. Uh, if the majority of this would allow the majority of the board to include improvement on some of those core competencies um, into the overall goals, basically a remedial plan. Yes, that's what it is. Performance right. improvement. Plan. Yeah, yeah. Right. It, right, right. But it separates out overall okay, RT goals. That was my question. Yes, so that's what it was sounding right. like. Yeah. So that's a separate document from the review itself. Right. That that right. That comes out. That'll yeah. come out of that, the review that, process. That's the right. proper way to do it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, can I yes. ask a question? Yes. I just want to be sure. Look, I think you know you got a you got a basic philosophy of the, what the subcommittee is supposed to do yeah when all said and done this isn't what we're approving we're approving whatever that comes yeah. out yeah. Yeah. exactly this is like guidelines it's a yes. motion so it's four to create guidelines yep. yes and i and i think that we're making it bigger than it needs to be really i mean i think we're there yeah honestly yeah i mean if you could clean that up bob and just kind of pull out the 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 lot um, well, pull the lines out, and then it reads. It'll be one. It'll be it, yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, he, you can do the clean. I think we're there. Yeah. I mean, I think yeah. goes. I mean, yeah. Vanessa yeah. said that a little while ago, and I think that she was right. That yeah. I think we're there. You know, because this is the this is the guidelines as, as, so, as mentioned. All right, four corners of what the subcommittee is supposed to do. Nothing's going to get approved until it's a final document. All right, then. Um, so it's made and seconded, right? Yep. Made and yep. seconded and discussed. Okay. Oops, discussed. Wait a minute. Discussed. One more change. This last oh. one. Uh, Number one point three point three has to go. They can. Oh, at the end too. Yeah. All right. Thanks, folks. No. Uh, we got to we'll do the vote. Well, all I think in favor. The last sentence went. I don't oh wait. I, it, it had a section that you might renumber. I yeah. thought you said so. We removed it up top. So I thought I'd better do something down below. Let's have an outlier. Take yeah, that out just, just, overall goals. Yeah, just take, take that out. This okay. whole thing. Yep. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Bingo. That whole thing. Yep. Yeah. 
no. Oh, that was an, an explanation of footnote. That, that was a footnote. Oh, that got moved up. Right. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. We took it. We no, we haven't voted yet. I just said all in favor. If Nobody was right. oh. All in favor. I thought you. <laughs> now, Come on. now we vote. Come on. All right. Okay. Good. Got it. All right. No. Um, Great. So the last thing. I've had three kids faster than that. <laughs> <laughs> you know. More than Dan is going to expire at any moment. <laughs> at least there was some laughter. I mean, we've got Oops. stuff. Hey, you so mentioned anyway. our meetings with the calendar. Wait a minute. Something on my hand says 1230, 2018. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out of here. Um, <laughs> I was afraid you were going to expire before we had that. No, jeez. Right. We did Quick, as Andy, fast move as we on could. to the next one. Yeah. What are you Article is? two. The next one right. will be um, Dan's uh, yep. update on uh, our Article okay. two. Okay. Our well, our goal uh, refers to volunteers. It doesn't refer to Article one or two of our policies. And in fact, if you look at what constitutes some of the issues surrounding volunteers. It actually crosses into both one and two. Right. Now, um, I've been in the process of working with Bob to kind of put together the history of what's been approved and won by the board previously, mm -hmm. what hasn't been approved, and he put that together for me tonight. So it turns out last year the board did take some action in, in approving uh, changes to certain parts of one, did not subject it to a public hearing yet. So that's still on the table for the public hearing. Well, let me just yeah. add, there was a public hearing and some oh, changes were made on oh, wait, March 27. Okay. There were some additional changes discussed, but not taken up yet. So what we need to have is the as-built. So that, that as version is on online, is the version as of March 2018, okay. public hearing approved. It is now up there in a PDF. It's been up there as far as, yeah. unless you put it up recently, I no, think it's been up there since March. This no, I, I, there was a disparity. Article I asked it, yeah. Not I looked at it today, and it's it not. was the right version. I haven't okay. touched it. Okay. Yeah, and I, I looked at it. All right, too. so that's the one I have the word version of, uh, the latest. We have lots of versions. Yeah, I know. That's I've, the yeah. very last one I Because I, I want to be able to walk people, here's where we're at. Yeah. Here's where yeah. we're going. Here's the yeah. But that's that's yeah, our that's starting, starting point. Right. So, right. Okay. So what are we doing on tonight? Are we going right, through them? I'm just, just, just going to give you a broad brush of what we're doing, but make make an additional request to the board because it's a little beyond our original uh, charter. Uh, so volunteers uh, in section one, we have to talk about the VAS and how that is going to operate differently from what it states currently. In other words. Uh, we're going to stagger the memberships. It's not going to be a one and done year, which we never adhered to anyway. Right. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, two year two year max though. Still or no? Uh, uh, two TBD. TBD. We'll talk about that. Okay. It's going to be staggered. What section is the VASC? Uh, one five, I believe. Mm -hmm. the, the copy I have. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Here it is. I got it. Then there's there's some uh, either going to do a look ahead or a look backward because we want to apply the code of conduct in section two to all members of the board not just liaisons but all members we're going to be uh, looking for the right way to do that it's clearest and one of our thoughts was to move it to section one which would be well I, i'm almost thinking more of a forward reference but we'll, we'll talk about that thursday night okay, when we okay. meet back yeah, rather than dig into the weeds of it right now. Uh, Bob uh, went through two and scrubbed out some of the uh, ad hoc committees that no longer exist, I believe. Correct. I saw in the version that was online. Yeah. So we'll um, uh, make sure we take those out formally. Um, we have not updated the sunset dates and the standing boards and committees, HRAC, climate, uh, so those need to be updated. We'll do that. It should be done every time we did, did we do it. You have to do it through a public hearing process, though. That's the challenge. Yeah. Well, can we just refer to a vote of the selectmen? You can absolutely take the dates out of the I think we should take policy. the dates out because yeah. they're... Yeah. That's what we're this right shouldn't have to be opened with, up. With the trails, right. that's what we suggested. Okay. But, but Bob and I will... Uh, I'm sorry, Dan and I will... Okay. We will uh, work through all that. Work. Uh, so that's what we're doing. Uh, we'll be looking at sections of one and two, some of which have been already voted on. <coughs> but most of what's been voted on, we're going to leave alone. One uh, addition I wanted to suggest for section one under operation of the board is that we have an abridged version of Robert's rules so there's a couple of those available one of which is in the back of every town meeting booklet I think that with some modification could serve us well as a guideline 
stuff at the 12 or 14 most common motions. Yeah. Yeah. So if the board is, has no objection, uh, well, as I said, while well, the patient's open in one and two, before we have the public hearing, yeah. let's get it all together. Got it. Okay? Yeah. All right. So we will complete the work on volunteers before we do that. Okay. So that's our goal. We'll be meeting Thursday evening in the burger room. Come on, come on. Yeah, I just ask a question. Yes. Um, is it your mutual expectation to then hold a public hearing on both articles at some time in the yes. future? Yes. Uh, we're hoping for either the first or second meeting in February. Okay. But I, I also want to be mindful of the other subcommittee that's working on 1 4 yep. and try to right. roll that into the hearing too. Exactly. When is that? Well, you guys tell me what your timetable is. We can either do one four as a separate hearing. I think we should do one four as a separate hearing. That's fine because it kind of does stand alone. It's, yeah. yeah. Well, right. and if we decide to go the social media route, then that that's going to be a little bit more of a longer term discussion. Oh, that's a longer. Right. Yeah. I'm I'm at seven pages right now. That's so. Fine. So if you're not at a stage of maturity. So we still have to do the communications policy And that's well. just social media. Yeah. Yeah. If I can add, I yes. talked to Sharon Town Account today about 1-6. Yeah. She hasn't had time to look at it, so she's going to have to do yeah. that in so the future. So 1-6, the anyways. financial section, yeah. Yeah. that's got to be looked at. Yeah. Okay, so that right. might just an yeah. update for the board. Thank you. Thanks. That's great. And okay. if um, communication subcommittee can catch up with us, then uh, we can all wrap oh. up. Ah. <laughs> Um, Taskmaster here. Oh, right. yeah. Yeah. No, just, yeah, I know. I didn't. I was kind of cracking the whip on you on the other thing, wasn't it? <laughs> well, you know, we, we got to keep each, each other honest. So to the minutes. All right. I have edits. I do too. I have some edits. Too. I don't have those. Take them one at a time. Okay. I have to read mine. I had oh, written them. I wrote all mine, all of mine out. So I wrote them all out last time, and I lost them because you guys didn't want it. I forwarded mine to Caitlin. Did you? Just that one. Yeah. Yes. Why not that bad? All right. Uh, I need to find the minutes, so bear with me. Well, we need a motion. I should start bringing them. Oh, um, yes. Have them live. I have that. And, and, and just the other thing, can I just as a, as a um, I don't know, point of something? Let's really make the effort to like do the minutes mm, yeah. each time because yeah. I, you know, I'm we're going back now. Yeah, what's is, months? Uh, and, and I think this it's was really an anomaly though because there was a staff shortage. No, I know. I, 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 I'm just saying. Let's let's just. I mean, everybody's doing. It. We're all going 100 miles we, an hour. But we let's should, just yeah, we should have a, work with the point of view of approving them not later than like two meetings yeah. subsequent yeah. to the yeah. meeting of the minutes. Bob, um, I'd suggest you address minutes earlier in the night because twice in recent months the board has put it off because yeah. it's the last time. I, I know. Um, I know. Other boards, in fact, most of the boards do them in the beginning. Of the it's not a bad idea. It's not yeah. a bad idea. Mm -hmm. All right. So okay. What can we just uh, on our packet? Can someone just tell me the pages we're starting? Uh, we don't have a motion. Yeah, it's on page seven. They start you, on page seven. Six, six B one. I didn't hear a motion. Lower I, I yeah. will do oh, that in a minute. Okay. Uh, page sixty nine of the packet. Wait, oh, this one All right, 64. so move. Um, pay, um, that's the temp. Oh, that's the sixteen one. Yeah. I'm gonna go back for right. I stand corrected. Sixty four. All right. Uh, oh, that was the, the tax classification yeah. one. Move that the select board approve the meeting minutes of October 16th, 2018, as amended. Second. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I've got some. Okay, so let's start the discussion. Uh, <coughs> now, um, oh, you're right, Vanessa. So we're we're starting on page 6A1, is that correct? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. On page 64 of our packet. Correct. As yes, the PDF was. Yeah. Right, the PDF. Yes. Correct. Yeah. So, um, any comments on page? Yes. Oh, you want to go by page? Yeah, let's just whip through. I'm um, up to three already. Uh, 6A1, anything? Speak now for your role in peace. Good. Um, 6A2, adding anything? Nope. 6A3, yes. Dan? Uh, under tax classification, second paragraph. Uh, uh -huh. The last sentence, if the board voted the 1.05 factor would raise the commercial tax bill only 0 0.71 cents, did you mean 71 cents per thousand? Tax rate. That should be tax rate. All right. Where, where are you? Tax. Again? Tax rate. Yeah. And you mean 71 cents, not 0 0.71 cents. Yes. Commercial tax rate. Oh, here. So take out the okay. point and make it right. Okay. Right. 71 cents per thousand. Yeah. Per thousand. Right. Yeah. Okay. That's all I had. Okay. Oh, uh, oh, that's the next set. Okay, never mind. Anything else? 
I just am looking for something that's not not the correct, but um, so there's a mention in here. Mr. Halsey then noted that the board should consider allowing commercial exemptions. Um, there needs to be a little more color to that. Um, I don't know exactly how you want to amend it, but you know, I mean, we voted to split the tax rate. Yeah. We voted to increase the commercial property owners tax rate and reduce the um, homeowners. There is clearly an exemption that's available for such an activity on behalf of the commercial property owners. I asked that we consider it. It was rejected because our employee told us that it was too much work. I don't think that's what he said. Right. I, don't I, think well, I think well, that, I think we reviewed the tape. We're going to find that. Out. Let's let's get the the, the so it, what, what page are you on? Six eight four. Six eight four. Okay. Thank you. Well, so I have someone. The very let's last. address John's uh, thing, and then we're going to have to go up. I, Mr. Halsey then noted that the board should start considering allowing uh, commercial exemptions. commercial exemptions. I guess should be an S. I mean, do you have uh, specific? language did, that you would want to have, address that with? Well, I mean, there is a very specific reduction available if we if we voted and implemented. Did you but, did you say that at this time? <laughs> yes, yeah, I did. And actually, I think, if, again, that's why we should do this like yeah. when we do it. I remember we actually had that discussion, mm -hmm. and it wasn't, it, it, Victor didn't say it was too much work. I think we actually agreed that I we, offered to help them do right. the work. No, but what, I, what I, I said think was that they couldn't answer some of your questions right. that night. But also, like I think what we, businesses we, would we be met, I, I mean, again, I could be wrong, but I think I remember us saying, you know what, we should be looking at this next year. And, well, and, and some people may have said that. I, I for one, wanted it that night. Right. Yeah. If we were going, yeah, that was the only time we could do it right. until next year. But at, and yeah. I wanted to so do it. Is but there any, just a second, Barry? Is there anything uh, that you stated that you'd like to add to flesh out this one line? I guess the I guess the the best way to correct it, and I don't want to re-argue the point. The no, point was no, done, not. and I get it, and I'm not trying to rewrite history. Yeah. But the history was that I requested mm -hmm. that be include in this year's tax mm -hmm. classification um, a an exemption for small businesses all right can, uh, can and I can, think if we if we write that in can you write that and in? I, I ask for that to so happen. so can we rephrase it to say um, John can correct me here if you if you'd like um, mr. Halsey then noted the board should why not just Allow, should, should approve? Should approve yeah. a commercial, commercial exemption. Commercial exemptions. Yes. Is that appropriate? Okay. Okay. Because um, I want, I kind of want that on the record. Yeah. Because I really. No, and you did say it. No, I did yeah, say yeah, it. Right. I felt strongly yeah. about it. Yeah. Okay. And like, this I, was I a tough, tough, and tough nobody else did. Yep. And, and, and but we, we did say we would look. We, we, I think there was agreement. Uh, at least a nodding of the heads. Okay. Can, can, can we? Can we All right. So we have to this. I have. I have something on this. Vanessa on this page. No. Okay. So. I have a question uh, yeah I'm worried about someone reading the page about the votes because we go from the numbers that are greater than one to the numbers that are less than one and is there a way that after each of these motions is made and voted on if we can state this corresponds to uh, I, yeah. 1.05 or so what's the point nine nine eight four plus but, but I don't think we're in that page yet are we the, I'm on yeah. four he's um, a couple right. paragraphs above where John I was. Yeah. No, I, it was Could we do that with a, just an explanatory sentence after the motion, maybe? Just as, oh, oh, oh. as a nut to future readers mm -hmm. here so they, they'd know what, what that corresponds to. It starts with... Because, see, the paragraph above says 1.071, 1.02. Yeah. yeah. I think it's the reciprocal of those numbers. Yes. Something well, like well, that. I, but, uh, so I had add uh, to, to the Halsey and Nismere agreed to on a 1.071. Because is that the and point? I, 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 my, my thought was add the corresponding minimum residential factor to these numbers so yeah. the subsequent motion is more easily understood. Well, it, the motion has been made and voted, so I think an explanatory sentence is the right way to do it after the, the, so, the vote. Just, so what would you... So after, let's say, the first one, yep. the, uh, motion... 
amend the motion of 0.994, which I'll rather the board board. This we have this corresponds to a minimum MRF of yes. Can we add that? Yeah. And then after yes. the actual three two vote, so this corresponds to it. Is that what the term is MRF? Um, so yeah. can I minimum ask minimum residential factor? Or is that the point nine nine eight four? Um, Whatever it does is. Does the board remember if you look at Alvarado made a motion to adopt a minimum residential factor of point nine nine eight four? Yeah. Was that one point oh two? That's that corresponds to one point oh two. Uh, well, yes. state, so then, state that as a side sentence after yes. the motion because yeah. that wasn't actually part of the motion. It's important for yeah, yeah the public to understand. Right. Uh, I don't know if that's yeah. correct. Do you well, you, why don't you? Can we give them the yes the yeah. task? That we should give them discretion. Yeah. I mean, okay. and all that information is the packet from that night, but I don't, yeah. you know, I can't get yeah. to it right now. Okay, that's my two. Well, I'm, I'm okay. fairly certain you you approve nine nine eight four, and you do have a one o two. So those must match. Okay. So so I think have the sentence. I think somewhere, it, it or maybe just the one you approved, where it says yeah. Berman would have like would eventually like to get to 1.02. You could add a parentheses an MRF of 0. Yes. 0.9984. Yes. And that might help yep. the reader. That'd be fine with me. Right. Um, That's all I have. So did you get that, Caitlin? Yeah. I think so. <laughs> um, so. On that same page, um, it, it reads, uh, I have to move my comment down. Uh, Andy Fe Friedland feels if writing is already perceived as not business friendly and we have never had a split tax rate before, then you say, then we still need to consider this. Um, and I th think. That was a little vague. I think I, and I haven't gone back to look at the tape, but I said something on the order of uh, never had a split tax rate before, before last year, because last year was when we started the first small split. Therefore, the single tax rate did not make us business unfriendly. Um, that was the point I was trying to make there. That we hadn't, you know, business. Reading has been considered business unfriendly for some time, has been my understanding. And um, there's sort of a misconnect, uh, uh, missing logic in that in that line. Um, Do you want to just write it out for her? Yeah. 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 Okay. okay. All right, I'll send that to you. Um, And then um, are we done on six eight four? I think we are. All the other comments I had to do with Dan's uh, question um, on on six eight uh, five. Um, I think we need to include on the who was opposed on the three two vote. Ms. Alvarado moved that the select word not granted. Don't usually say who was opposed, so people know where we stand. Anything else on that page? Yeah. Okay, uh, that's it for that seven minutes. Going on to. Uh, do we want to yeah. vote on that motion? Oh, yes, yeah, thank you. So I've made. You did. Yep. You made a motion. We yeah. seconded. We discussed it. All in favor and uh, the meeting is amended. Please say or just raise your hand. Um, I will make the next motion. Thank you. Uh, move that the select board approve the meeting minutes of October 30th, 2018, as amended. Second. Okay, okay discussion. I, um, I have some edits here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so 6B1, yes. technically third paragraph, uh, where it starts, Ms. Alvarado, continue this conversation, um, emphasizing, I would like to change that entire paragraph to emphasizing uh, the importance of talking to your children about differences and how we as a community must come together to address these ongoing issues. Um, you don't have to write all this stuff down. I'm just going to give you this. Okay. Um, the paragraph above that, um, 
that it, it said uh, Mr. Friedman called the meeting to order at 7 p.m. He stated that uh, the, started the meeting by making a statement about the most recently recent def deeply offensive graffiti that was found in one of the schools, and and I, I didn't. That, that's where I stopped and turned it over to Vanessa. So I think you can strike the sentence, uh, sentence or two after that. The rest of that paragraph, um, I didn't say. I simply just turned it over to Vanessa. I said something like, you're sick of hearing me, so I'll turn it over. I don't think she wanted to put that in. I'm sorry? I don't think she wanted to put that in. No, no, exactly. <laughs> I, I just turned it over to Vanessa. Yeah. Um, so. I'm done on this page. Oh, if forest, I think if forest is one R, correct? What? Where are you? Forest. Forest. Town Forest Committee Bottom. Yes, one, six one, one, one. Oh, where? Unless you're Forest Gump. <laughs> That's what confused me. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. It kind of so looks right that way, but I know it's It not. does look right, but it's what just. What page are you on? 6B1, the bottom of it, is okay. the forest. Town Forest Committee, the forest, it just says one R. All right, I have 6B2. Are we there? Yep, yeah. yep. Uh, so, the very top. Um, the ZBM at Discussed Eaton Lakeview project again. Um, I would replace that second sentence with there are ongoing concerns about parking areas and water drainage plans. There are concerns. And again, I just won't give you this. Okay. Um, I also have an edit under public comment. Yep. So. Same page. Same page, 6B2. Yep. Under Emily Sisson. Mm -hmm. um, Uh, okay, so Emily Susan, Chair of the Recreation Committee, wanted to explain that they love people giving gifts to the department. Um, so, but, and then strike the rest of that sentence and replace it with, she noted the importance of following procedure so that the appropriate parties are fully informed. That's, that's, good. that's kind of what she just said, though, in here. Uh, that's better. <laughs> uh, but I don't remember, but I don't remember what she said. But, uh, 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 well, that, that yeah. explains the context of the whole thing better. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And so the rest of that paragraph is fine. It was just that section of the sentence. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm done on this page. I just have one small one. Um, in the historic deed restriction, train depot one uh, yep. down at the bottom. Um, the last sentence, it is a minor change. Um, I would, I, this will be more understandable if that, the, the, the concept that it's a minor change um, is put up front after the first sentence. So it would read the owners have wanted to do some interior renovations to the old train depot um, and the interior changes are minor. Okay. The interior changes are minor um, after the first sentence. I don't have anything on 6B3. Anybody else? Nope. Okay. 6B4. I, I have a, a clarifier that I, mm -hmm. I actually sent this to Kate one. Oh, yeah, I got so it. So this is under where the town manager's contract renewal. Mm -hmm. um, I thought this needed more color and, and sort of explaining. I'll read what I wrote. And this would be inserted after um, actually a new second paragraph. So, um, okay. Um, Mr. Berman stated that one of the goals of the contract was to bring the town manager's total compensation more in line with managers and peer communities. He presented data from an extensive search of contracts to show that the current manager compensation was below the median of peer communities. He shared feedback from other town managers and, exec and, and executive serve firms. Um, that the pool of qualified municipal administrators is shrinking due to retirement and the strong labor market, and fully one-third of administrators or managers have turned over in the last three years. Manager salaries are being renegotiated to retain top talent, and starting salaries have increased to lure candidates. You got all that, Caitlin? <laughs> she has it. So, I mean, I just thought it needed context yeah. about kind of, yeah. you know, so... So I'm just adding that whole paragraph yep. in between. Okay. Correct. Um, so, so what would follow after that paragraph 
Miss um, Alford feels the increase is too much. She notes the towns they use to compare us are not actually like us. I would strike that uh, and replace it with uh, Miss Alfredo stated she was concerned about the amount of the increase. She noted some of the towns used in the comparison were much wealthier. Um, I had, uh, I believe, three small ones um, on this page myself. Um, the one where it, paragraph that starts with um, Mr. Ensminger moved that the board take the agenda out of order. The board then this is before mm -hmm. right. same page on the top. Yeah, a little bit above oh, the time. Oh, it starts in bold. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, Mr. Ens Ensminger moved that the board take the agenda out of order and do the, uh, do the town manager's contract next. The motion was seconded by Ms. Alvarado. The board then discussed why the, it, they would take this out of order because, and um, uh, some members felt it was more appropriate. So I would uh, replace the some members to just name, name us. Um, Replace that some members with Miss Alvarado and Mr. Friedman um, uh, felt it was more appropriate to do the town manager's goals for his contracts instead of just some members that, that, that doesn't really um, portray who's saying what. So you're just looking for identification of who was in favor and who yeah, was in Yeah, I mean, yeah, oh, okay, okay. Oh, it's, it's simple. It's, it's um, in the vote for right. the next sentence. Yeah, and then um, I think. Uh, yeah, I mean, is that overly duplicative because it says it voted against it? Oh, yeah, I suppose one could. I, but it's, uh, it, it, it doesn't hurt to Yeah, it's fine. I, I seem to recall, John, you pointed out that um, you didn't feel that the two were connected, um, but that didn't get in here. I don't know if that was something you felt important about. The, 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 two, the, the, the discussion of goals and the discussion of contract, you, you said uh, something the, like uh, uh, the goals and the contract are disconnected. I, do, I do, did do say that. That's I do feel that have. way, and yeah. that's kind of why I had the discussion. But, yeah. you know, it, I don't know that it has to be in here. If you fine. want it in there, it's fine, okay. because I do believe that. Yeah. Um, it sort of states the other side of the argument that... Well, the, the con I mean, I think what you meant to say, well, I know we don't do what we meant to say, is, is that basically the contract was based on the evaluation, which we had just completed, and goals are for the next year right going forward. So I think that's no, what I you actually, meant. No, I believe that the two aren't connected. Oh, yeah, that's and, a he, and, that's a he, and he said that. So if you want to put that in here, it would reflect uh, point counterpoint, so to speak. Um, um, are we good on this page? Uh, there's, I think there's just a, um, either, not a typo, but um, it's under town manager's contract, Mr. Es Ensminger and Mr. Berman were the subcommittee delegated. I think they, we should, should say that they are on or they constitute the subcommittee. I mean, we were designated by the board, yeah. so yeah, but it doesn't we're the, compri like comprise the, we're no longer. We comprise uh, the You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's okay. a question of tense. Okay. So um, either say that they are on the subcommittee or that they constitute the subcommittee. How about replace were with R? Or that. Or the with simple, R? Yeah. That's, okay. That works. Okay. Um, I liked it, the fancy constitute, but... <laughs> Um, with efficiency. Okay. Um, are we on 6B5? Yes. I have a question. Yeah. Uh, on 6B4. Yeah. I, oh, oh, wait, oh, the, the one thing I do feel strongly about um, here is is that under the town contract, uh, town manager's contract renewal, we everyone spoke. And then, then I, I, I gave my spiel, but it didn't get reflected in the notes. So if it's okay with you, uh, I'll read the following and send it to, to um, Caitlin, so that we're all represented as weighing in on, on, on the contract. Um, um, 
I, Mr. Freeman stated that we asked residents for an override because we could not afford enough police, officers, teachers, and firefighters, and town hall staff. Freeman expressed concern that after the override passed and resident taxes have gone up, we are now turning around and are going to give our top uh, employee uh, a, a, a raise or some sort. Uh, I, I can't read the rest of it. But I did say that I went back and watched the video, and, and I'd like to have uh, right. what I had said uh, right. reported. So I'll send that to you, okay? All right. If I may. Yes, on this paragraph, Mr. Berman explained um, it should be lose, not loose. Okay. You don't want to lose me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, 65. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I have a comment. On the uh, debate on the motion to table? Yep. I, yes. Okay. Uh, okay the, the sentence, the board voted on the amendment and it failed with a 2-3 vote. There's two changes, I think you mean. The, you, the vote, it should read, the board voted on the motion to table. Yeah. And it failed with a 2-3 vote with Friedman, Berman, and Enzminger opposing. Is that correct, John? You, you? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Andy, you made the point yeah. that, you know, the minds are made up. And, right. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And you voted uh, to not the table. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. Then you opposed. That's right. So also that, on that page, uh, that very first sentence, um, Ms. Alvarez noted she would like to see all the information about her communities, et cetera. I would replace that with Ms. Alvarado noted she wanted to approve the town manager contract, but would like to table the vote until the next board meeting to allow all members of the board to review the data used by the subcommittee. There's also a typo in my name on the first portion of the motion. Anybody else? 6B6. Got nothing. Got nothing. All right. Anybody else? Oh, actually, um, on six, you're on everything. <laughs> oh, so it's okay, Barry. We're here. I mean, I mean, we're just we're we're we're, 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 we're starting we're the meeting with this. We're we're using color. Um, uh, well, don't do five at a time. Discuss mass well, that's, ballot that's question three, yeah. second paragraph. Yeah. Mr. Berman, thank them for bringing this to the board. Um, uh, he will support this question, and he's glad they're there. They are here, um, uh, and then I said something. Uh, I said that um, I was thrilled to have a track at the table. Um, it, it, I'm sorry, I lost you. Where are you? Okay, I'm sorry. I'm on uh, discuss mass ballot question three. Mm -hmm. okay. So the second paragraph. Mm -hmm. okay. um, after that. Yeah. Um, Mr. Berman said that he was thrilled HVAC has a seat at the table to discuss these difficult issues with us. You're not on, you're not on ballot question one, you're on three. It's on three. three. Yeah, so it's, uh, yeah, I th so we're still on that same page, 6B5. Okay, I, I, well, all right, fine. It's on um, 6B5. Yeah, that's fine. Bob, is there ever going to be a time we can just put YouTube in the archives? <laughs> I mean, I will say, okay, people, okay. people, all right, let's, let's keep, let's, let's, keep let's just truck through that, it. Yeah. Set, you know, sometimes, right. sometimes well, the, the video does not explain the context as well right. as minutes can. And minutes, uh, they're not supposed to be a stenographic record of the meeting. Right. Right. Some right. minutes are like, I struggle. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come right. on, man. It's, it's 11. We're in the home stretch. It's an art. It's not a science. All right, go, go. Six So, so wait, we got to vote on those minutes. we got to vote. Yes, please. That's the 30th. I just ran out for an answer. So that's the discussion. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor of approving those minutes. Minutes with the uh, uh, amendments. October Thank you. Thirtieth. Um, and then uh, eleven. Move. Go ahead. Move. Uh, move. Move the select board approve the meeting minutes of November thirteenth, two thousand eighteen, as amended. Yeah. Second. All right. All right. Discussion. I have something on page sixty-three. I have sixty-one. All right. Go back. Um, discussion discuss action items from stakeholder meeting um, it says mr. Freeman explained that he came up with four action uh, four action items um, and I and I said what I came up with was four proposed action items um, 
um, and then add the five, so change the four action items to four proposed action items, and then add a sentence. Um, he, this was, I read this uh, from the paper. He, he noted that the proposed items were not set in stone, and that he looked forward to input from the board in order to improve them. So I can mail that to you if you like. Okay. Um, but that's important to me that that, that be, be clarified. Um, 62. Uh, I, 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 sorry, I got my line so, uh, lost. I, oh, um, this is also very important. Uh, I think action uh, uh, the bottom of 61 action item one would create a new human rights board in partnership with the school um, I think you add you need to add the words the, the words pending school committee approval because that was in everything I wrote um, and and then um, I followed that up with an ad hoc committee would be created that would establish such, such a board. So, but I can send you these if you want. Okay. Sixty two. Sixty three. Yep, I got one. Um, I have a small one for 62. Oh, just remove just. In, in, uh, Mr. Freeman noted town meeting doesn't meet off enough and suggested just creating the board now because they have the ability to, to, to do so. It sounds like uh, you're, because we can, why not? Okay. So just if you remove the just, I think it, um, it's not something I suggest doing on the web. Um, 63. 63, the third, yeah. I have something on the third paragraph, the third one. So Dr. Orenstein, Mark Doxer, and Mr. Friedman. Yep. Um, there I, I asked, at that point I asked board members to state whether or not they supported the establishment of the Human Rights Committee. The consensus of the board was that such a committee was necessary. I don't remember no, that. no, no. I think I what we said that. was is that it w what was necessary was to discuss yeah. whether yeah, we should do committee. That. Right. Right. Yeah. No, no. But who well, should we take action on, on this? It wasn't to. Yeah. Not to support no, the commission. I, I did. A, I, got a, I asked for a feeling of the board. Should we move toward yeah. looking deep, deeper at this? And, and that that's what you asked. I'll go back to the tape. But um, well, if that's if you asked that question, I would have said no. I would have said you no. said no. No, no. All of us said yes. I, I would no, no. You said no. You said no. Uh, you said Not yes. You said yes. If that's the way committee. you asked the no. question, I definitely would have said no. no. You did. No. Yeah. Um, um, but, no. I don't remember. But I, I'll, I don't go back, I'll go back. I'll go back and we were on the wrong tape, side. Tape and and um, well, we got well, to vote. We have to prove the minutes. Right. Yeah. Well, no, I mean, you can always bring them back because that was the whole. In fact, I remember even bringing this up. I said, wait a minute, are we endorsing this or are we going to, you know, and then the whole thing that created the ad hoc to then go look at it, were you empowered Vanessa and myself to do that? It was not to... And I supported that. Right. Yeah, no, you did. That's what you I thought did. I supported. Yeah, but, that's but, what we did. But I did a feel of the board. Well, to see if it's something that. even worth moving forward on. Yes. That's, so, yeah. given that we have a disagreement, can we perhaps agree to say, Mr. Friedman feels the board is to take action as soon as possible and delete, but... Yeah. And then we created an ad hoc. And then we created an ad hoc. Okay, I just, I don't want to make it seem like I shoved it down everyone's throat. I did ask for... Yeah, but when you put it in the, the way board. that... No, you did ask that, but when you did, when you word it the way you did, it, 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 right. it made it that we were voting on something that was Folks, different. Folks, we're within two minutes of 11, meaning we cannot take up another agenda item, so can we... Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You could table this one if you want to... No, 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 no. <laughs> Uh, Town clerk is going to come in next meeting. Tick tock. Yeah. <laughs> Just what did I, say, I what did I say wrong? I, Vanessa's suggestions minutes. seem logical. Just sure. strike, strike the end of the sentence. Yeah. Okay. Mr. Friedman feels the board needs to take action as soon as possible. Period. Right. Period. I think it's important that people know that I asked for the feel of the board. Uh, to move okay. Forward. All right. The, the, Mr. Friedman asked for the feel of the board. Asked for the feel of the board in taking action. 
as soon as possible. Right, we'll all agree. We'll do what they do in the legislature. We're gonna we're gonna stop the clock at ten fifty. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> all right. I think they do right. stuff like that. Good. Okay. Uh, anything else? Yeah, on I got six, more. Three. Under liaison reports, um, I'm going to try to recraft six three. Yeah, yeah. yeah. liaison reports regarding the FCC. Yep. Mr. Ensminger notes the FCC just proposed a new rule that may limit the funding of local access channels by cable companies. Can you send that to her too? I mean, I think we well, should all send her this so she doesn't yeah. have to. Right. Is that simple enough? You can just take the. The FCC just proposed a new right. rule that may. Yeah, proposed a new rule that. Uh, that may limit. Funding limit funding of, access of, of local access channels by cable companies. Okay. Yeah. I got that. Okay. 64. I have one. Okay. Uh, uh, Emily, assistant chair of, rec of the recreation committee. And then strike the rest of it and replace it with noted the length of the fence is important as the original design would eliminate the ability to use it as a soccer field. The Recreation Committee authorized Jenna, the Recreation Administrator, to move forward as she found appropriate for the needs of the field. Okay. I'm done. Okay, six three, six four. Anybody? Sixty five. No. Anybody? And then six. 66. Right. So, oh. so let's vote on those, those minutes. Um, with the minutes uh, uh, revised, um, all in favor? Okay. So I think we failed to get to one set of minutes. Is that correct? I can do the Keep last. going. Yeah, it's an agenda item. So you, agenda. you're within the agenda. Okay, item. good. Um, um, so, so hold on. 61. What move that the select board approve the meeting minutes uh, of December 4th, 2018, as amended? Second. Uh, so all in favor? Uh, it was quick. Oh, okay. uh, yeah, go. All the minutes? No. Just the fourth. Yeah. Just the fourth. Just no, the one that. No. Don't be too shocked. Yeah. Oh, no. no. Yeah, don't ask. She's, She's still like crushed. Crushed. She's crushed. Don't ball. question it. <laughs> uh, okay, hold on. Move the select order for the meeting minutes of December 5th, 2018, as amended. Second. All in favor? Aye. aye. All right. Good. So the next set is December uh, December 4th. No, we just did no, we did 4th and 5th. We did the 4th. That's it. We're done. Fifth, you're done. Move to adjourn. Second. Second. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. We're done. We're That's done. It. I read 5th. both motions. Um, that was long. Right. That's, that's not. Yeah, I mean, you were tough. Uh, John Keehan is over here. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sorry, I can email that to you. This is fine. Okay. I just, so that you could just copy. You got a motion on the table. You can't. You may be expiring. It's a privilege. It's leave. a privilege. Yeah, we're we're can't. There's a motion to adjourn. It has to be dealt with. Right. Didn't we just vote? Yeah, no. Yeah. I, you know, to, to be honest, guys. Um, and, and Vanessa, I, I, I yeah, the vote is safe. I, I, I uh, <laughs> all over. Yeah, man, I, I had questions for Bob on emails. All right. Okay. Motion to adjourn. We, you already voted. We already did that, man. There, I did it. Just call for the vote. Call a uh, discussion. Uh, no discussion. <laughs> okay, good. Uh, it's debatable. All in favor? Say aye. All right, good night. All right, good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.